Salutations. Welcome to Pod Mortem. I'm Travis Hunter, joined as always by my co-host, my sister, and my brother-in-law. Hi, I'm Renee Hunter Vasquez. Hi, I'm John Paul Vasquez. This week, we're broadcasting live from the Housewares section at S-Mart, discussing the 1992 comedy horror film, Army of Darkness. This film was directed by Sam Raimi from a screenplay by Raimi and his brother Ivan. Though it ditches the cabin in the woods for the Middle Ages, Army of Darkness acts as the third film in the original Evil Dead trilogy. This film draws inspiration from comedic, literary, and mythological sources and provides a unique blend of humor, horror, and fantasy with a noticeably lighter tone compared to its predecessors. Despite post-production studio meddling, Army of Darkness would eventually go on to achieve financial success and is widely considered a cult classic. This film was recommended to us by friends of the show, Gonzalo Miramontes and Miguel Myers ATX. We'd like to thank both of you so much for your continued support of the show, as well as this suggestion. So, Army of Darkness, what were your first impressions on the film? Uh, I remember watching this movie when I was really young Uh uh-huh uh and i thought this was the greatest thing in the world (laughs) (laughs) and i still feel that way oh good (laughs) man it's been coming up jp lately i know (laughs) well this is uh your birthday film right yeah because i think when this comes out your birthday is tomorrow i think today's the 12th right uh if we're lying (laughs) yeah (laughs) so happy birthday well thank you but again uh, i feel like you have had a streak right um of films well well there was yeah. <laughs> there was a bump in the road last week for there him yeah well. <laughs> but otherwise pretty it's good good yeah, yeah. <laughs> i know this one's a little uh more sillier than the second one but i do i do appreciate it as much as i do the first two and uh i can't remember i know we were talking a little earlier and uh, which one of y'all had brought it up, but it is the first is horror, the second is horror comedy, and this one is comedy horror. Right. And they all work. Mm-hmm. And it's just, it's like, uh, they kept going, and I love it because I feel like this is a perfect setup into the show. I did watch some of the the first episodes of the show, uh-huh. and I was like, okay, I was like, all right. I was like, I, I, I can dig it. I was like, I like this. Uh, I haven't seen this one as much as the other two. Mm -hmm. Um, I honestly didn't. I remember the gist. You know what I mean? What happens. But I did not remember like the play by play. (laughs) And so rewatching it, like we were talking about earlier, it's very, um, it feels like Evil Dead 2. They were like, well, what if we add a little bit of silliness into it? And then this one, it feels like, well, what if we like only do the silly part? (laughs) (laughs) So like, for what it is, it is a lot of fun. It mm. is Bruce Campbell being peak Bruce Campbell. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Um, it's a fun time. It is not scary. <laughs> 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 I just want to be clear well, no. on yeah. that. Um, well, that's the comedy. It is <laughs> yeah, yeah. Exactly. <laughs> um, but it's a lot of fun. You can tell that they worked their asses off. You can mm. tell that they had a lot of fun. I know there's uh, alternate endings and stuff. Yeah. Uh, the ending that I watched, or I think the the theatrical one, right? I right. think is the story that we're telling in this film. Right. That's the ending for it. Yeah, to me. yeah. I would agree. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it's a lot of fun. For me, it does not hold up to kind of the, I don't know a better word, status in my mind right, right. to the first two. But this is just throw it on and we're just going to laugh and and have fun. Like, mm-hmm. to me, that's what oh, this yeah. is. It's not it's not the same. Yeah. <laughs> <I'll just laughs> <say that. laughs> but I do like it. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, I would definitely agree with that. Um, is I have to reiterate when, whenever we were talking about that earlier, straight up. It feels like the more that the films go on, and it does stop with the remake, which is like straight horror. Oh, yeah. yeah. Like completely. Right. But it really does go horror, horror comedy. And I, I would dare yeah. to say it's like... Uh, comedy. It's, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I was going to say comedy horror. Yeah. Yeah. Like it's, like, it's like a whisper. Well, yeah. exactly. <laughs> but, but what I do love about it is even though... And it is it's such a bold fucking choice to yeah. do what they did. No, yeah. Because any I think of any other filmmaker, even with the ending of Evil Dead 2, because the way that they've done this series is mm. like they, they'll retcon the fuck out of it. Yeah. And they don't really care. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 
And so if they were to end Evil Dead 2 the way that they did and then start Army of Darkness, it'd be like, no, we're back in the cabin. Yeah. yeah. Sure. It'd be like, fine. Yeah. <laughs> you know? You got a bus. Yeah. <laughs> Whatever you say. And I think a less adventurous and experimental director and crew would probably be like, well, the money bet is to go back to the cabin. Yeah. For sure. But this is just kind of Beyond. bonkers. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I do enjoy this movie a lot. Yeah. I will say um, it is, it's on the shoulders of Bruce Campbell. Right. Yeah. Uh, an incredibly committed cast. We talked about um, off mic about how everybody else seems to be <laughs> part of a period piece. Yeah. And Bruce Campbell <laughs> is doing. He just showed up. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and, but that is, I guess, exactly the story. It fits. Yeah. It yeah, all works. That's true. It works. Um, I think that I would have to say probably. And I hate even saying this, but probably my least favorite in the trilogy. Mm. Yeah. Only because I really <laughs> well, do. No, yeah. The the first two have a very special place. Right. Um, I watched all three of these with dad when I was a teenager. Mm-hmm. And um, <laughs> we watched the first two and he's like, um, what about Army of Darkness? And I was like, and what's that? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> because, <laughs> yeah. you know, and that, we'll get into all this bullshit in a bit about Universal. Right, right. And how they're meddling kind of yeah. fucked up with a lot of stuff. Mm-hmm. But um, no, I just I, I have a lot of fun with this movie, but it's. I, I, sometimes I'm like, dare I say too much fun? <laughs> you know? I don't know. I'm not sure either. <laughs> what surprised me in doing the research, I watched a making of documentary called Medieval Times, mm. which is uh, kind of goes hand in hand with the name that I would yeah. prefer. Yeah. Because yeah. yeah. whenever they were working on it, the original title from Sam Raimi was The Medieval Dead. All right. And that's it's so, the much, yeah. so much better. All right. It sucks so bad that they had to change it. Army, because didn't they say they didn't want three? Yes. They didn't want the number three yeah, in yeah. the title. Yeah. Which Army of Darkness is cool. Like, it's that yeah. cool sounds cool, but Medieval Dead, you still get the Evil yeah, Dead yeah. in there. Yeah. You, no, I mean, it's, I, I it's it. perfect. It's it does. Perfect. Yeah. Army of Darkness, the title itself came from the producer, Irvin Shapiro. Mm-hmm. Uh, unfortunately, he I believe he passed away in 1989, so he never got to see this. Aww. Oh, that sucks. But um, he was kind of the guy, aside from Stephen King, that yeah. could really be attributed to the success of right. the film getting distributed and all that. But um, I don't know if you remember, we talked about on Evil Dead 2, episode mm-hmm. 77, <laughs> uh, they had said that they put out a paper ad mm. and it was Irvin Shapiro yeah. and it was a picture of Ash over a medieval city right? and it was called Evil Dead 2 and the Army of Darkness so this idea was the original idea right. for Evil the Dead 2 one. right? but they just didn't have enough money yeah. and so after Sam Raimi makes Darkman and Evil Dead 2 becomes a success yeah. suddenly he got the money and Universal partners with Dino De Laurentiis they split the cost Sounds like a great idea, right? Yeah. Right. Yeah. No. So it all worked out. <laughs> I, I, I'm afraid I've got some bad news. Yeah. <laughs> um, the, the real issue is that, and I, it's funny to me how a lot of the films we cover kind of go hands in, hand in hand with films we just covered. Right, right. But the dispute between Dino De Laurentiis and Universal came about because of The Silence of the Lambs. Uh, <laughs> I, I remembered his name yeah. from that. Exactly. So, okay, yeah. yeah. And so I guess they were suing each other because <laughs> <laughs> after the success of it, right. they were like, well, who has the rights to Hannibal Lecter? Should we make a sequel? Yeah. And of course, both of them are like, me, me. Yeah. Right. And uh, it becomes this big thing. And then Army of Darkness becomes a pawn in oh, wow. that dispute. That sucks. So it's like, I think depending on which source I saw, Army of Darkness after it was completed was shelved for either six months or a year. Damn. Because this legal battle was going on. Yeah, yeah. But they finally settle it. And then Universal comes on board and they're like, huh, 96 minutes. How about 81 <laughs> why but i don't know they, yeah. they they cut 15 minutes of the film they changed they made them change the ending yeah yeah they didn't like the title i will say and i'm not usually um a big fan of ending changes yeah yeah i usually and i'm sure we're gonna get into the original ending of course i usually favor a bleaker ending right, right. i think that what we got is this oh film. no yeah like, yeah. I, yeah, yeah. It just and the thing about no, that's true the original ending is like <laughs> after everything we've seen ash go through yeah <laughs> <laughs> can he <It's> live like- <laughs> oh <No>, yeah <laughs> <laughs> now before we get medieval on this film we would like to issue a warning for spoilers 
Pod Mortem is a very in-depth podcast, and in thoroughly discussing horror films, we have no choice but to spoil a thing or two. If you don't wish to be spoiled, please go watch the film, then come back and enjoy the show. If you've already seen the film or don't care about spoilers, let's hail to the king. Now, this film relies heavily on having already seen The Evil Dead and Evil Dead 2. If you haven't, we recommend you go watch them or listen to episodes 41 and 77 of our show as a refresher. So the film begins with incredibly dramatic music as we see horse hooves walking through sand, followed shortly by exhausted men being marched in stockades. The camera tilts up and we see a poorly wrapped wrist missing a hand locked in the stockade, panning over to reveal its owner, Ash Williams, played by the amazing Bruce Campbell. Yeah. Woo! It's it it is the moment of it's our hero. Yeah. yeah. The way that you established that is funny to me because my first note is okay, this is already very dramatic. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like the music yeah, yes, right. yes. I do we'll talk about the music a bit later, but I think the score is just fantastic yeah. in this film. Oh yeah. And it's so dramatic and there's a lot of like operatic like moments. Yeah. Which, well they again, went hard. Yeah. 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 They're like, no, we're taking this very th- Yeah. <laughs> But in a voiceover, Ash introduces himself as a slave. We hear a whip crack against him as he recoils in pain, telling us that as far as he can figure, it's around 1300 AD and he's being marched to his death. But he tells us it wasn't always like this. He had a real life once. This was great to me. This (laughs) and everything that we're about to get into, the Uh little recap. Because it really reminded me of like record scratch. Absolutely. You're, you're probably wondering how I got in this situation. I feel like this is like primo that. Yeah. Yes. Oh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but we do flash back to happier times. Ash working in the houseware section of the S Smart supermarket, helping a customer and reminding them to shop smart, shop S Smart. Great slogan. Oh, yeah. yeah. And uh, first of all, I, I've worked in a grocery store, and you're not getting me to say the slogan every customer. <laughs> <laughs> That's a lot. Ash is a great employee. That's a yeah. big ask. And it did make me laugh because he giggled after. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he goes, shop smart, shop S smart. Mm-hmm. <laughs> he likes so, his job. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Times were easier. <laughs> but we then see Linda, Ash's girlfriend, played this time by Bridget Fonda. For... Point two <laughs> seconds. Yes. Uh, yeah. This well, is a cameo. I was like, was that Bridget Fonda? That was Bridget yeah. Fonda. And then we like never see her again. They say that I guess she was a big fan of the first two films. Yeah. And so she just asked Sam Raimi. Oh, that's yeah. great. Um, it was funny to me uh, that because I found out kind of recently that she's married to Danny Elfman and that yes, kind of right. blew my mind yeah. and he does a piece for yes. this film. <laughs> and so, it's fantastic. Yeah. I was like, oh, that's shit. Yeah. <laughs> But they um, also said that I guess there were more scenes in S Smart mm-hmm. where Bridget Fonda had a little work to do. Okay, yeah. that would have ma- that makes a little more sense. Yeah. And I, I guess Universal was like, mm, nah, yeah. no, <laughs> none of that, <laughs> no character work. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but Ash says that they drove together to a small cabin in the mountains, and we see them arrive outside of it through the fog in his Oldsmobile Delta eighty eight. Mm-hmm. Gotta have it. Oh yeah. <laughs> With a shot of the cabin that I'm sure is a miniature, (laughs) Ash says that they would shortly learn that the cabin had recently been occupied by an archaeologist seeking to translate and study his latest find, the Necronomicon Ex Mortis, or, for the layman, the Book of the Dead. Fantastic. Yeah. (laughs) Ash leaves through the book, and in an awesome sequence that's reused from Evil Dead 2, we see the book flip open as red waves crash in the background. I love that. I loved it then. I love it now. I love it. Yeah. (laughs) And it's so weird because this sequence contains a lot of reused footage from Evil Dead 2. Yeah. But then there's a lot of footage that they just reach out for. (laughs) (laughs) For funsies. Yeah. Because we talked on Evil Dead 2 how they didn't have the rights to the Evil Dead. Right. So they had to reshoot like a recap of the Evil Dead before they can get into Evil Dead 2. Yeah. And you think the same thing's going on with this one, but then you're like, well, those are the red waves for fucking. (laughs) (laughs) Like, sure, sure. But Ash says that the book is bound in human flesh, inked in blood, and contains burial rites, funerary incantations, and resurrection passages, and was never meant for the world of the living. He explains that the book woke something in the woods, and we see an evil force move through the trees and crash through the window of the cabin, descending upon Linda as she screams. Ash says that it took her, and then it came for him, too. 
And this is the last we see of Linda. <laughs> yeah, <No>. by, <laughs> by Linda. <laughs> I thought it was funny because you don't even see him kill her. Yeah. None of that. I guess they're well, like we not. Well, yeah. Ash, yeah. Is, Ash is telling the story. So it's like, yeah. we don't, we don't, we don't need, need to talk about that. <laughs> <laughs> too dark. Too dark for, for Army of Darkness. <laughs> But the evil also got into his hand and turned it bad, so he had to cut it off. We watch as he takes a chainsaw to it, laughing maniacally. This was one of the portions that was reshot. All right. Because they said the pacing was wrong from Evil Dead 2. Yeah. And I guess to have him do it again, Sam Raimi's like, that's the speed. Yeah, yeah. yeah. (laughs) (laughs) But unfortunately, even after chopping off his hand, the evil returned. We then see a cavernous vortex open between the trees, sucking in everything in sight. Ash holds on for dear life to a plank of wood caught in the door, asking in vain, how do you stop it before the plank breaks and he's pulled into the portal? As he flips through it screaming, we get the title, Army of Darkness. Now, for some reason, we actually get the title, Bruce Campbell versus Army of Darkness. (laughs) Which made me laugh because he's not playing himself. Yeah. (laughs) We know who he is. Right. Yeah. Is, he, is he not? Yeah. <laughs> uh, on commentary, Sam Raimi goes, we know what they want to see. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's that. Well. That's hilarious. <laughs> but again, I it, it upsets me that they, it, it makes no sense that Universal would be like, well, we don't want Evil Dead 3 in there at all. Yeah. Because it's like, that's only going to increase your box office. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Or, you know, Evil Dead 3, the medieval dead. I'm still, yeah, I mean, some, you know. Yeah. I'm holding on to hope. I, I heard, I read in the UK it was called Medieval Dead. Good. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, it, well, it makes sense. It does. Yeah. It's too. Per- How are you gonna slip a let a pun like that? Yeah. yeah. Slip through your fingers. Shameful. Shameful. Universal. If you're listening, yeah. <laughs> shame on you. I uh, I know. I asked you earlier in the version you watched it was cleaned up. Yes. Well, the the DVD that I have is still very old. <laughs> So in this version, you still see him on the wire fly through (laughs) the screen. And I still, even when I I was the fucking Leo DiCaprio when I seen it meme, (laughs) but that still makes me love it so much more. Because it's like, even as a kid singing, be like, oh shit, they left it in. But you you get what's going on. You know what I mean? And then as an adult, still, a little tear forms. And I'm like, man. (laughs) It's like, yeah, it's like, I it's like, I love it. This is, you know what I mean? It's like, it doesn't matter that you see the harness on him and he's flying. I, I don't that didn't take me out of nothing that yeah. made me love it even more and that's what we talked about I think it was on the Evil Dead where they had like clear crew members and stuff yeah and for some reason they cut it out of the reissue yeah it's like that's part of the charm yeah I want to see it yeah, yeah. I want to see the giant cut out yeah. of the moon <laughs> yeah <laughs> But the title dissipates, and through an explosion, a portal opens in a bright sky, with both Ash and the Delta crash landing on the ground. So this shot was reused from Evil Dead 2. All right. I read somewhere that they had, I guess, attached the Delta to a crane, Mm -hmm. but it was too heavy for the crane, and it fucked up the crane. Oh, shit. (laughs) And so they couldn't use the shot they used for this. Yeah. And they were like, why don't we just reuse the one we already have? Why were we? (laughs) Why were we not doing that in the first? I don't know. (laughs) I don't know. And I wonder because Sam Raimi, you know, (laughs) I'm sure it was cool. You want to do that again? Well, hell yeah! yeah. (laughs) It's like the demolition derby up in here. (laughs) But like, I I never found any information. But anything like any destruction done to the Delta, is it a fucking? Yeah, I wondered that as well. You know, like a stunt car. Yeah, 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 I wondered that as well because I know he loves this car. Right, Right. I, I read somewhere that he even put it in a Western that he made. Oh, <laughs> shit. They, they said he took apart the chassis and used it as a wagon. So uh, like only he knows. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, oh, no. It's, it's in there. <laughs> See the fucking license plate hiding like, somewhere. What the fuck? <laughs> it's just in the saloon. Yeah. Like, what the hell? That's, not, that's anachronistic. But <laughs> coughing and standing in the debris, Ash is quickly surrounded by knights on horseback. Immediately, I'm like, unless y'all are all cosplaying, yeah, this is. I'm in a, yeah, yeah. I'm, in a, yeah. <laughs> I'm in a lot of fucking trouble. I would hope it's some fucking larpers. Yeah, yeah. I don't think my, I look Ash and we'll learn handled this way better. Than, oh yeah, oh no, yeah. <laughs> the way that this man, I think I have it a couple times in my notes. The way he'll just roll with the punches. Yes, like, he's been through so much that it's just like all right. Sure. Yeah. 
1300 okay yeah fantastic well, if if you were to ever have Ash at a job interview, yeah. <laughs> it's like, well, I can adapt very easily. Yeah. <laughs> but Ash, though clearly confused, takes it super chill, as we said, hitting the leader of the group with an easy now, chief. <laughs> <laughs> Lord Arthur, played by Marcus Gilbert, lifts his helmet to see Ash clearly. As the other knights attempt to attack the Delta, amazed by what they perceive to be its armor... Ash tells Arthur that he doesn't know how he got here and doesn't want any trouble. Arthur calls over the wise man, played by Ian Abercrombie, who rides over. Mr. Pitt. Yes. He's like, next stop, Potterville. I, g- <laughs> I gasped. Yes. It was surprising. I don't know why it was so surprising to see him here, because it's like, I mean, I, I love Ian Abercrombie, but it's not like he's this A-list person. No, but I was still <laughs> like, was still oh my very, God. Yeah, I was like, it's Mr. fucking Pitt. <laughs> And they got him, I think, before he was Mr. Pitt. That's hilarious. This might have helped him become Mr. (laughs) Pitt. Who knows? But the wise man believes Ash to be the prophesized hero written about in the Necronomicon who will save them from the Deadites. Arthur isn't buying it, though, and as his men's yellow banners wave in the wind, he accuses Ash of being one of Henry's men. I don't even know a Henry. Yeah, I've never. Yeah. This is this is a uh, <laughs> a sticking point for me. I know that this is not a film where you need to look too closely, uh-huh. right? Or be like, well, this doesn't make any sense or whatever. Like he's wearing a belt, thank you, and, yeah. and boots, and are those corduroy pants? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's clearly not dressed like them. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you don't talk like anybody yeah. here. No, you're not dressed like anybody here. I mean, the fact that they're just like, oh no, he's with it. Yeah, yeah he's no, with Henry. that's obviously fell <laughs> yeah. out of the sky. I was like, no. <laughs> It's like it's a diff- it's a regional dialect. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but we see Duke Henry the Red, played by Richard Grove, as well as his men kneeling in stockades in their red tabards. Arthur orders Ash to the pit, his men cheering in unison before seizing him and dragging him away. But the wise man watches in disbelief, marveling at the chainsaw that Ash left behind, lifting it up and tilting the blade towards the camera in a very neat transition. Yeah. It's a great transition. Yeah. We see the sun hanging pretty fucking huge in the sky. Yeah. Yeah. Um, This isn't something to be like, hey, guys, wait, (laughs) look at this. Yeah. Like, you've never. This is a machine. (laughs) If they weren't convinced by the car that was sitting on the screen. Well, they thought it was like a dragon or something. Yeah. (laughs) <laughs> I'm just like you know y'all have never seen some yeah, shit like this before not at all this deus ex machina or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> but I did want to say because they we get that big bright shot of the sun yeah um, they had talked about on commentary the conditions for filming this were fucking awful I bet <laughs> they had uh, the costumes were heavy enough as yeah. it is but they filmed I believe six days a week and the production ran for a hundred days <laughs> <laughs> which is nuts yeah um they said that filming in the desert uh the days obviously were unbearable I yeah. Bet. yeah but the nights were freezing oh yeah you don't think about that with the desert that's that's funny you don't because i remember when i first heard that i was like what you know what yeah. I, mean? I know i was right. young but i was still, still even then i was like what do you mean it's cold like, physically tell me how that's yeah, possible that- <laughs> like what the fuck is even going on but they said that uh marcus gilbert the guy who plays lord arthur in an interview on Medieval Times, he said that one day, because of all the heat, yeah, he came home and he weighed himself, and from the, all the loss of water, he lost eleven pounds. Oh my god! god. I'm like, you're killing these yeah. people. <laughs> Drink a cup of water. That, yeah, yes, please. that's torturous. Yeah. That's your reminder for the day. Drink. Yeah. Drink your water. Please. Drink your water. But we rejoin the march through the sand, Ash catching the whip again, which honestly for no reason. Yeah. No. And the guy guy whipping him goes, have a taste of this. Like, why? (laughs) Because he's an asshole. I guess. What a prick. But in a long shot, Arthur's men march Ash and Henry's men to a large castle. Ash is awe stricken as the gates open and he's pulled inside. So this is a castle that they built in the desert. All right. And we just talked about Tony Trimbley on The Devil's Rejects. Uh-huh. Yeah. He was the production designer for this as well. Holy All shit. Right. <laughs> so pretty cool. Again, a lot of re- yeah, yeah. yeah. It's kind of creepy. But they built the first story as the exterior. And then in a wide shot, the rest of this castle is a matte painting. <laughs> <laughs> amazing i can't tell that, no, no not at all and even you know we're talking about wires and stuff yeah some of this shit is really really good no that's yeah. incredible but they, they said there was also supposed to be a forest but because of the budget and this is not a joke it sounds like it they literally had one tree <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> and it just sits in front of the castle, <laughs> kind of, kind of tragically. <laughs> <laughs> But as they continue on, townsfolk jeer and kick sand at them, but pushing her way to the front of the crowd is Sheila, played by M. Beth Davids. Miss Honey. Yes. Yeah. Again, blown away. Absolutely. <laughs> I was so surprised to see her here. And Mad Men. Mad Men too. Yeah. yeah. But every, because I watched Matilda at such a formative age, everything that I see her in, she even pops up in 13 Ghosts. And I'm like, that's Miss right. Honey. That's, 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 that's all she'll yeah. ever be. That's yeah. her only name. Um, Bruce Campbell in an interview had said that they had fought really hard to cast her. Yeah. Because they were like, she is, first of all, she's a real actress. Yeah. yeah. Like, no, she's yeah, great. Yeah. But they had a lot of actresses screen test for it. Mm -hmm. And I guess there was one actress that Dino De Laurentiis just thought was really, really, really attractive. And so they're like, no, Dino, we need, you know. Yeah. yeah. And he's like, no, I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> and so they had to make her screen test again. And it was to just to convince Dino De Laurentiis. And he's like, all right. She's Jeez. great. She's great. She's yeah. a really great actress. And I will say that she looks like she fits here. Oh, no. Like, yeah. I mean, yeah. for yeah. a period piece, she looks like she vibes here. Yeah. Uh -huh. It's funny to me because I read that Tracy Lords auditioned for that, Sheila. I Nothing against no, her. I don't think that would have fit. I was going to say nobody looked like Tracy Lords in 13. No. <laughs> <laughs> that is a that is a modern woman yes <laughs> it's just funny to me because i feel like this would have i'm not saying that it wouldn't work but i think that sheila would be a completely different yeah. character yeah she would have been um and that could have even played more into what this film is and who ash is just right. because it would be sillier it would yes but <laughs> i i think they did the right thing <laughs> by casting miss honey they say like there's a, a meme that goes around on twitter whenever an actor ends up in a period piece that doesn't belong there uh -huh. They're like, you can tell that X actor has held a cell phone. Yeah. Yes, yes, <laughs> like, that's, that's, that's yeah. exactly what yeah. I mean. There's yeah. just some people that just do not fit. Yeah. It's like you have been to Starbucks. Yes. Like you yeah. can, and you'll Clearly. never convince me you that you have You went there this it. morning. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but Sheila rushes up to Arthur asking for news about her brother and unfortunately is told that her brother died in battle the night previous at the hands of Henry's men. They told her really shitty, too. I didn't appreciate yeah. that. He's like, sorry about that, fam. Yeah, yeah. sorry, dude. <laughs> and just rides off. But she does stand solemnly as the men carry on with the prisoners. Cut to Ash being ridiculed and getting his ass beat by the townsfolk. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like, you know, it'd be, uh, the execution part is bad, but the dragging through town, I think, might be worse. Yeah. Because you've never met these people, and they're like, fuck you! <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no, they're like being spit at. Yes. Yeah. Um, Ash, though... Does call someone a cretin. He does. Yeah. <laughs> and that made my week. <laughs> that might be where Sydney got it. It has to be, right? I was laughing, though, because they're throwing rocks and shit. Yeah. But they were like prop rocks. Right, right. But, of course, because I, I feel like secretly, I don't know if Sam Raimi hates Bruce Campbell. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> but he was throwing full-on potatoes at him. Oh, like fuck. real. He's like, we're getting you into character. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he I, brought real rock. Yeah. It, <laughs> I want to say it was on the Wikipedia page. I can't remember. But later on in the fight scenes, they uh, Sam Raimi was like, no, make him do it again. Yes. Make him do it as many times as possible. And that Bruce Campbell was getting mad. He was cussing. I'm well, like, maybe he does. I mean, yeah, I was like, fuck. <laughs> but yeah. you know that he does it because he still puts him in everything. Yeah. But yeah. it's like, why I are you abusing him? I won't lie, though. If I'm making a movie with a bunch of my friends... <laughs> <laughs> and Gonzalo is like, you know, I'll do it, dude. I'll do my like, own stuff. All right. Bet that. <laughs> you will. All right, Tuff, I got you. It's like we're gonna I and I I will say I think it's kind of a power thing too, because they told this they told this story. I don't know if it was like the first AD or whatever, but Sam Raimi was standing with him and he's like, Hey, watch this. And he's like, All right, Bruce, uh hop on one foot and he does it. Oh. He's like, All right, Bruce, uh, spin around in a circle. All right, and he does it. All right, Bruce, uh, blow some raspberries, and he does it. And he's like, See? That's <laughs> like, that's the thing though. He's is, so game. I was gonna wow. say you can tell well, Bruce Campbell is down. He's game yeah. for anything. And the fact that who Ash is and what these movies are, maybe we do need him to blow raspberries. Yeah. <laughs> maybe I do need to it's all. It's all very possible. <laughs> it could all literally be for yeah. the film. There, there's a thing that was not used later that they had an idea. I'll talk about it. Oh, no. <laughs> but even if the thing is, is that it sounds so absurd. But if it was in this film, I'd be like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> of course. 
Of course. <laughs> Back to what you said, though. Potatoes. That would fucking yeah, hurt. Oh, no, that would, yeah, that would hurt. <laughs> oh, yeah, that would hurt. I just <laughs> love the idea of him going to the store that morning and be like, oh, yeah, oh, oh this is going to fucking hurt. hurt. <laughs> Bruce yeah, is gonna, for Bruce. <laughs> he's going to be bruised, Campbell. <laughs> <laughs> But Sheila rushes up to Ash, cursing him and calling him a murderer, telling him that her brother's death will be avenged. Ash is like, why'd you say fuck me, though? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, I don't even know these I people. I just got here, dude. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but the men are marched to the pit and are taken out of their stockades once they reach it. Ash looks back at Sheila, who does not break her gaze. Yeah, What what's funny is when they go by the blacksmith like looks at him all disappointed it's like do you think he's henry's blacksmith yeah like it's like i don't right. know why you're looking it's like, like why is he dressed I like thought, that? yeah <laughs> <laughs> i thought we were enemies why are you like yeah, oh like, man he's known him you for may, years yeah. you make <laughs> us all look bad really. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but henry obviously does not recognize ash as one of his men so he introduces himself with a list of lofty titles including the leader of his people Ash refers to him as Mr. Fancy Pants and remarks that Henry is only the leader of two things right now, Jack and shit, and Jack left town. <laughs> yeah, well. The fact that, <laughs> that we're still spewing one-liners. Yes. I, mean, I, I can't respect it more. Wow. Um, what gets me, though, is the fact that he's like, oh, no, I don't know. All quiet. I'm like, can yeah, you loudly say yeah. that you don't fucking know me? I, but he's like, it's not going to mean yeah. anything. Yeah. But, and the thing for me is that with the one liners, <laughs> Henry's never like, I don't know what that means. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> he's just like, all right. Yeah. And it was Jack? Yeah. <laughs> That's why he doesn't say anything. He's like, oh, the, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> right, like, whatever. Pray tell of Jack, yeah. stranger, or whatever. <laughs> um, but the thing is, is Ash, t- he did have one liners in Evil Dead 2. Yeah. But this film takes it to like, oh, this, no, is, yeah. this is another on level. steroids. Yeah. It really is. But Arthur, flanked by guards, approaches the pit, proclaiming that an evil has awakened here. And while he and his men fight against it, Henry wages war on them. But Henry somehow breaks away from the guards, basically saying that Arthur started it and his people have been victims of this evil, too. It made me laugh because even with all the flowery language, it's very childish. (laughs) (laughs) He started it. (laughs) But as his men drag Henry away, Arthur says that Henry and his men are no better than what lies in the bowels of the pit. He didn't seem that bad. He seemed pretty I cool. I mean, he introduced himself to Ash. He didn't raise his voice when he was just <laughs> like, hey, you don't look like one of mine. Now he should have raised his voice. Yeah, he, should, nah. he should have. That's <laughs> no, my I point. Know, but but he, know, wasn't, yeah, yeah. he wasn't a dick about it. He was like, I don't know this yeah. man. <laughs> <laughs> but Arthur prays for God to have mercy on their souls as he directs his men to open the large metal doors of the pit. Ash and Henry peer down as it slowly draws open, and the men speculate about what could be down there. An old woman, played by Sarah Shearer, lurches forward from the crowd, very much in favor of the proceedings, and snacking on what appears to be a whole ass loaf of bread. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I. So I was like, this is a very interesting, <laughs> very interesting choice and moment. I assumed that she must be somebody that Sam Raimi knows or something. Right, right. I could not find any proof of this. <laughs> <laughs> this is just an amazing bit of a cameo. Yeah. <laughs> Very interestingly, I was looking at her IMDb. She did motion capture capture for Red Dead Redemption. Okay. Holy shit! So that's All just right. a little side note, I guess. Oh yeah, remember the lady in Red Dead that was eating bread? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that has to yeah. be her. Rockstar was like, I know just the person. <laughs> But one of Henry's men is thrown into the pit, screaming, splashing into the water below. The crowd sits in dead silence and suspense as his fate remains unclear for a moment. But suddenly, his screams echo and fear fills Ash's face as a fountain of blood sprays out of the pit. Now, this fountain, they had tested it before. Right. But it was way higher than they thought it was going to be. <laughs> well, I was like, that kid no, had, yeah, it goes pretty. Uh, yeah. The kid had a lot of blood in him. Yeah. I was like, holy shit. I was like, is there a dead-eyed whale down there? Yeah. <laughs> is this some blowhole action? Or? I love the little camera back and forth. Here. Yes, yes, yes. That, the little wobbly cameras. Like, okay, we're over here. We're over there. We're back there. It's I was so like, good. Man. There's, it's, Sam Raimi has a style. Yeah. And oh, it, yeah. You see it in all the Eva Dead movies, of course. Yeah. But you see it again and drag me to hell yeah you yeah. see it a, a little bit in spider-man yeah remember this scene with doc ock that's basically a horror movie yeah <laughs> <laughs> it feels like the evil dead yeah. it's so good <laughs> 
But Arthur's men surround the pit and look inside as many of the townsfolk cheer. But before they can proceed, one of Henry's men break, <laughs> makes a break for it. <laughs> He's like, fuck yeah. this. I laughed out loud. Because I don't blame him. Hell no. Everyone is so entranced, um, understandably, Yeah. in what just happened. And then you, <laughs> you hear, He's escaping. <laughs> <laughs> he's like could i make it to the gate yeah <laughs> why not I, why I not would, fucking yeah. take a chance because it's potentially getting free or this yeah, yeah. how bad is that gonna hurt down there yeah, oh, no. yeah. No, i'm ready <laughs> <laughs> and all they just heard it yeah oh no yeah no, that's there's way better fates than that but unfortunately for that man arthur snags a crossbow and and the camera follows the fired bolt as it finds a home in that man's spine, pinning him to a post. Hey, man, nice shot. <laughs> you know, like the song? That's pretty good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> in 1300 <Right? laughs> why the fuck not I don't know. <laughs> ash is like i listen to filter yeah. <laughs> that's fine <laughs> but the crowd goes wild initially but then they all turn to look at ash guards drawing their swords as everyone hurls abuse at him Ash pleads his case, saying that he never even met any of these assholes before, but when they don't buy it, Ash begs Henry to tell the truth that they don't know each other, but Henry says that he doubts that they would listen. But you could try, Henry. Yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> He's like, I know these assholes. Yeah. <laughs> you could try. They won't give a shit. But as this whole thing continues, Sheila grows fed up and takes matters into her own hands, picking up a stone and throwing it at Ash's head. I was like, maybe that was Sam Raimi. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but it hits him hard and he stumbles in slow motion to the edge of the pit, trying to keep his balance as he once again proclaims his innocence. Arthur gives the order and Ash is pushed into the pit, pulling a sick front flip as he falls. So we were just talking about the cinematography. Yeah. In this portion, there is so much fun shit. Oh, yeah. yeah. There's like a swirling POV shot because Ash is dizzy. Yeah. And then <laughs> this made me laugh out loud, but there's like an action shot of a camera tilt as Arthur makes the point to yeah. send him in. He's like, and do it. Yeah. <laughs> but it's played so big. Yeah. <laughs> But um, the DP, the director of photography, was named Bill Pope. All right. And he had, honestly, and continues to have one hell of a career. Yeah. He worked on a ton of Sam Raimi films. All right. He worked on a couple of Edgar Wright films. Ooh. And he was the cinematographer for all three Matrix films. All right. Oh, oh shit. Yeah. So, dude, fucking. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I mean... I don't want to say, well, that makes sense because I love The Matrix too. But, right. <laughs> <laughs> but th that's one thing I will say about this movie is the camera shots and like the things they do. I'm like, man, everything looks fantastic. It does. And it just, I mean, I know that a lot of people will be like, you know, a lot of people look down on like cult classic B movies. Right, right. But there's good no, shit. Oh, yeah. Don't, don't be a snob. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but Ash lands at the bottom in a dungeon in a small pool of water covered by a thick mist. He sloshes around as he makes it to his feet, looking around and finding the stone walls covered in chains and skeletons. Not a great sign. Yeah. Not at all. With his back turned, a hand with yellow fingernails reaches up, but it disappears before he can see it. Ash cautiously creeps around, but suddenly, Pit Deadite number one, played by Shiva Gordon, launches up out of nowhere, startling Ash, and proceeds to sock him several times in the face as the crowd above cheers. <laughs> I don't I don't know what the first guy got. Right. But that's true. Ash is just getting a little ass whooping. Like yeah. I, I feel like he's getting off very easy <laughs> yes. compared to the giant spray Geyser? of blood. Right, yes. Right. I well, but it's Ash. Yeah. <laughs> well, the dead I ate already. Now it's that time is true. to like, oh, to they play. want a show. Yeah. yeah. Well fuck him up a little yeah. bit. <laughs> <laughs> but she gives him the old wind up punch. And sends him flying back into the water. <laughs> That's fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> the pit deadite swoops on him, doing some cartwheels and backflips on her way to stomp him. I said in the gut it could have been the crotch. Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. It most likely was the yeah. crotch. <laughs> <laughs> I read that the actress who played her was a stunt woman and a gymnast, so she did all that. Oh, those. badass. Oh, nice. But for her efforts, Ash snags her in a pair of leg scissors like he's a cruiserweight <laughs> <laughs> and just throws her to the ground. It made me laugh because Ash was like, why you? Yeah. Well, he's like, bold of you to assume I've never fought a deadite. That is yeah. true. She's <laughs> like, I got this. I'm like, I don't know. But this is just like the first of a lot of Three Stooges yeah. yes. feeling moments. 
but Henry cheers on from above, but a guard puts his sword to his throat and Henry's like, all right, all right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that was Little, not a lie. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> But I thought you didn't know this dude. Like, like, oh. Sorry, sorry. Yeah, but I, I have picked him as my favorite. So. But we then cut to a wider shot of the crowd. Henry and Sheila up front with Arthur as he calls for the spikes. Goldtooth, played by Michael Earl Reed, echoes the order, and we see the guards raising some chains. Ash looks around, realizing walls of spikes are closing in on him. He continues fighting the pit deadite, eventually throwing her into the spikes, but she just hops right off like it's nothing. From above, the wise man calls out to Ash, calling him Strange One. <laughs> <laughs> that made me cool. laugh out yeah. loud. He goes, Strange One, and Ash is like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> like, well, who clearly else? you're talking yeah. well, Who What's else is there? <laughs> There's a dead eye there. That's pretty yeah. strange. <laughs> yeah, but they got him down there hanging out. <laughs> that is true. <laughs> but when Ash finally looks up, he sees the wise man holding his chainsaw. The wise man tosses the chainsaw down, and Ash jumps up to meet it, his wrist clicking into it. That click killed me. Oh, it's great. <laughs> <laughs> I laughed because Henry's like, yes! Yeah. But he doesn't know what any of this means. <laughs> <laughs> He's just along for the ride, yeah. man. <laughs> but Ash gives it a start as the pit deadite rushes at him again, and as soon as she reaches him, he saws her in two. Now, I'm very confused by this because the... A lot of what we see in this film is very tame for the series. Right. Yeah. Uh, this uh, chopping in half, you really don't see that much. Yeah. And you see like that geyser of blood from the other dude. Right, right. But outside of that, there's really not that much. Not no. really. In this movie. And so I think it would surprise both of you, if you don't already know, to learn that the first cut of this film was originally rated in C-17. And Bruce Campbell was like, this is basically How? like a PG-13 yeah. movie. It is. It is. <laughs> so no, it what, is. what the fuck? What the fuck? Yeah. But even with the cuts that they made, this film is still rated R. And it, it, should, yeah, it, it should, should not be. be. This film yeah. should not at all. No. no. Especially for that, because this could have been so gruesome. Yeah. yeah. For oh, what no, we yeah. know, he's then he's covered in blood or whatever. Yeah. Doesn't happen. But I was like, all right, sure. MPAA, another one. They're on my list with Universal. Ridic yeah. Just ridiculous. <laughs> But Sheila curses Ash from above, but he is still in trouble because the walls are still closing in. Yeah. Those walls would have been done closed already. No, like, they, no, they, no they wouldn't. <laughs> <laughs> to be honest. They were watching too. They were like, yeah, they're yeah. like let's back up a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> See where he's going with this. <laughs> but Ash looks for a way out. And just as he reaches a wall and is about to start climbing, Pit Deadite number two, played by Billy Bryan, a far more monstrous Deadite than the first, busts out of the camouflage and lunges for ash that motherfucker looked crazy it yeah. Is. yeah it's pretty tough he i they said that i guess they designed this deadite like later in the game and then sam raimi saw it and he's like yeah throw him in the pit <laughs> <laughs> interestingly billy Bryan, who plays this deadite also played the stay puffed marshmallow man and ghostbusters <gasps> yeah so dude uh, he's oh, got some yeah. very cool <laughs> pretty good credits but Ash saws off one of the Deadite's hands, which lands on the face of one of the townsfolk, causing Blacksmith, played by Timothy Patrick Quill, to burst out laughing. Lands in the mouth. That's yeah. right. I'm like, this is slapstick. This yes. is when I'm like, okay, we're just here to have fun. Well, yeah. <laughs> I think I think if, if the hand landed on his face, that's fine. But the Blacksmith reaction. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, there's still some crazy shit going on down there, dude. <laughs> Um, I found out Tim Quill, who plays the blacksmith, he was in a ton of the Super 8 films that Sam Raimi and Bruce Campbell shot in high school. That's oh, so nice. cool. And so he comes out to Hollywood and then he gets a part in this yeah, film. Yeah. And so it's like a reunion. Oh, yeah. Um, sadly, unfortunately, he passed away last year. Oh. So rest in peace to Tim Quill. Yeah. But Ash continues whipping ass down below and then he rips off his belt and ties it to the chains in control of the spiked walls. As the walls get closer, the chain lifts him up, but just as he's about to make his escape, the Deadite grabs him by the ankle. He battles with it, kicking it in the face and almost loses his grip on the belt, but he's able to wriggle free just as the walls close in on the Deadite and he climbs to the top to freedom. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> yes. Yeah, that, Can that you like, imagine yeah. being in the in the townspeople watching no, that? No, no, no. Like, this usually doesn't go like yeah. this. <laughs> I'm gonna be honest with you. <laughs> we need a town meeting like that shit. Yeah, no was more. Not supposed to happen. No, no, no. It's like a gladiator yeah. actually winning. Like that's not. Yeah. yeah I was like, mm -mm. Uh, Bruce Campbell on commentary because you see the way his arms wrenched up. 
He says his shoulder is still messed up Ooh. from filming this. Oh, man. And uh, I am surprised. Uh, on, but then again, Bruce Campbell getting injured on, under yeah. Sam Raimi's watch. That's just part, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's just part That's of it. That's not news, I really. Bet, I bet he'll do it again. <laughs> oh, absolutely. Yeah. I do want to talk about the makeup really quick because they, oh my fucking God. Yeah. yeah. They do so much in this movie, but mm. it's so many that they needed three effects houses to do it God. all. <laughs> uh, we talk about K and B a lot. Uh -huh. They're obviously a big part of this. Right. Uh, but there's also Tony Gardner's company, Alterian Incorporated, as well as Tom Sullivan, who worked on the both Evil Dead films. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But K and B estimated they did about 70% of the effects. Because all of the deadites were them. Oh, shit. Wow. <laughs> really? And we see later. Yeah. They have fucking puppetry. Yeah. The makeups, the animatronics. Yeah. There's like, so yeah, much. Yeah, there's a lot. It's and nuts. just a mix of everything. Yeah. yeah. And that's one thing that this film, I don't. I feel like when you look at the Evil Dead trilogy, mm -hmm. it really doesn't get credit for all the effects work that they do. Yeah. That's true. Because it's, I, and the amount that they were paid and all that stuff. Yeah. Like, I... This is for the love of the game. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but the townsfolk cower away from Ash as he lifts himself out of the pit and approaches Arthur. Ash tells him that his shoelace is untied. <laughs> and Arthur clearly doesn't want to look, but he does anyway. <laughs> <laughs> y'all have shoelaces i guess I, <laughs> he's got laces on his on his on arm braces brace, yeah. yeah he's it's like let's check it out yeah. real quick. <laughs> but in doing so he earns an uppercut from ash that lifts him off the ground and he falls knocked out on his back ash begins antagonizing the crowd asking who wants some and who's next gold tooth looks on frightened getting Ash's attention and Ash <laughs> asks if he wants a little, but Goldtooth is like, no, nah, I'm, yeah. <laughs> I'm good. We, we see what oh, you yeah. can do. I would have went after him too. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> but Ash walks away and Goldtooth pushes around an underling because he guess he's got a show. Yeah. yeah. Like, I'm not, ex I'm still dominant. Well, <laughs> he, he grabs his whip and he pushes him and he's like, you want a little? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He's like, like no, nah, yeah. I'm, I'm all right. <laughs> mm -mm. But Ash then approaches Henry, who is still being held at sword point. He shouts for Arthur's men to let him go, and they oblige, letting Henry and all of his men go. Henry giving Ash a smile and a thankful pat on the arm before laughing <laughs> loudly into the face of one of the guards. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I will say that he looks genuinely happy. He does. Like, I I was smiling happy, and I was like, all right, uh, yeah, you know what I mean? I... <laughs> I had a little like a mixed reaction because I was very happy that he was so happy. Yeah. But at the same time, the way he was laughing was almost like, I can't believe you're letting yeah. me go. <laughs> like he's like, the I'm bad concerned. guy. <laughs> <laughs> I'd have like buyer's remorse. Yeah. <laughs> he's like, no, they were right. Yeah. yeah I'm very I'm a bad. menace. <laughs> but Arthur has now regained consciousness and is on his feet telling Henry and his men to halt. But they just ride off together. Henry offering a thank you to their generous hosts. Arthur calls for his sword boy, who presents Arthur with his sword. Arthur unsheathes it, and then he knocks the boy to the ground. Yeah. <laughs> Which just seemed Once like a again, lot. Once again, he got punked. He's got a show. Yeah. That is like, true. No. I'm Lord Arthur. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but the sword boy scurries away, clearly used to this type of treatment. And Arthur steps forward, telling Ash that for his arrogance, he will see him dead. Just then, a shot rings out, startling the villagers and exploding Arthur's sword in half. We return to Ash, who blows the smoke from his freshly fired and now retrieved shotgun. Ash lays down the law, brandishing his shotgun to the crowd. This is his boomstick. He shares the gun's lineage, the fact that it was bought in S-Mart's sporting goods department, and even gives a product description and the retail price. They're like, we don't even have an S word yeah. here. Fuck that is. <laughs> <laughs> right. Oh, I hear they're building one down the, <laughs> <laughs> like, are they really? right down the dirt road. Yeah. <laughs> down the dirt road. It's not paved. Yeah, it's no. Not paved. It's the only kind of road. <laughs> yeah. It'll bring jobs. Yes. Yeah. So I've heard. <laughs> but he reminds them, shop smart, shop S smart. And then he's like, you got that. <laughs> yes. <laughs> they agree. Yes. Yeah. They <laughs> very fearfully agree. Now, again, this is clearly employee of the month material. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. When he gets back to his time, he better have a framed <laughs> yeah, <no sure>. photo. <laughs> but he promises them the next one of them to even touch him. And then he quickly turns around, noticing Deadite number two has somehow made it out of the pit. He fires, breaking the chain that it was attached to, and then fires again at the Deadite itself, sending it flipping back into the pit. 
The crowd stands in awe, including Sheila, as Ash flips his gun into the holster at his back. The camera presses in on him as he suggests that they talk about how he can get back home. Now, Bruce Campbell said on commentary that the shot in this part right here, yeah. he didn't have the holster in the back. And so there's crew members that run up as the camera <laughs> presses in and they just hold the shotgun to his back. <laughs> it's, like, it's just so That's funny. Great. <laughs> uh, I love it. I noticed too. And and I, and I know they're little things, but he never reloaded that shotgun. No, he did not. <laughs> but you, if you listen, you hear a reload sound. Seriously? And he never <laughs> cracks it in half and reloads it. And I was like, man, I I appreciate you at least put they the tried. reload sound. Yeah. They're like, <laughs> oh like, shit. Yeah. It, was, a- it was off screen. It was yeah. off yeah. screen. <laughs> <laughs> but that night, Ash reclines in a chair, now in period clothing. Of course. And is fed grapes, a massive turkey leg, and wine by three beautiful women. I'm like, so now we got grapes, meat, wine, and concubines? (laughs) Because I guess for killing the deadite that y'all had trapped down there. I I just don't, the transition was on. That is true. (laughs) And what's weird to me as well is it seems like the deadites are kind of being used by you. Yeah. Yeah. It was, it made me think of, um, in the walking dead when they were like oh no walker fights or whatever yeah, yeah. like that's what it felt like uh, <laughs> so you like the dead <laughs> yeah, right. oh you saved us did he yeah. <laughs> 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 Sheila enters the room kneeling before ash at his side asking for forgiveness and explaining that she thought he was one of henry's men but she was wrong he scoffs at her remarking that she first wanted to kill him and now she wants to kiss him the fact <laughs> <laughs> the fact that they all wanted to kill him. Yeah. 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 He's like, but you came but up to me. St- yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but you'll still take the clothes and the treats oh, and yeah. be yeah. pampered. But he's like, but you! Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. he's Specifically. So, he's so mad at her. <laughs> he, <laughs> he spits out a grape seed and he tells her to blow. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, God damn. But just then... The wise man walks in, telling Ash that the only way to send him back is with spells inside of the Necronomicon, which they don't have. Even worse, Ash is the only one who can quest for it, for some reason. (laughs) 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 Sure. (laughs) I am like, is this another prophecy? He's the chosen one. (laughs) True. That is true. Ash starts to lay into the wise man a little bit, but they're interrupted when they hear water hitting the floor. They look down, following a trail of water and flower petals to an overturned pitcher in the hands of a cloaked figure. The figure turns around, revealing themselves to be Possessed Witch, played by Patricia Tallman. Patricia Tallman? Yes. You might remember Patricia Tallman as the new and improved... Improved! (laughs) Barbara in Tom Savini's Night of the Living Dead remake. Oh, shit. Holy yeah. shit. Right. That is fucking cool. Yeah, she's also a stunt woman. That is badass. She's just badass. Yes. Yes. Oh, and, yeah. And this isn't the only thing that she does in this film. Like, she does quite a few things. That is yeah. so cool. But this is, like, the big one for her. And I guess they said that she was called in by KNB to do this. Oh, shit. Sure. For having worked with her on Night of the Living Dead. All right. Like, I know who can do this. Yeah. I just really love her because she took my one, like, hated thing from, yes. <laughs> from that film. And- I, I put improved for you. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> she, <laughs> she was like, well, what if we did the opposite? Yeah. Though? I'm like, tell me more. <laughs> <laughs> but Wynn blows her hair back as she begins to levitate, telling a startled Ash that he shall die and he shall never obtain the Necronomicon. Ash positions himself protectively in front of Sheila as the witch proclaims that they shall feast upon their souls. She then collapses to the ground as Arthur approaches her body. Now, it was explained later on commentary, but it was in this moment that I realized Arthur's hair and beard are hilarious. Oh, no, yeah. And- <laughs> yeah, I don't know and- who cut his hair yes. or a wig or what. I was like, I... <laughs> and th- that's what it is. Okay, yes. thank God. Yes. I was like... Fuck. I was like, because he did not look like that a <laughs> scene ago. Yeah. Yeah. But the reason is that this was this entire sequence was shot during reshoots. Mm. Uh, okay. And so they're all doing other acting jobs. Yeah, yeah. And they come back to replay these parts and his hair is cut. His hair is different. You know? yeah. Yeah. But I guess they had a more elaborate sequence that they had planned before with like pillars and all this shit. Mm-hmm. But it just didn't work out budget wise. 
And so when it came time to reshoot, it was just like months later. All right. And that's why, because even Sheila's hair looks different. It yeah. does. And I think that's a wig as well. Yeah. yeah. So <laughs> just for the record. Because <laughs> I was like, what yeah. is that? No, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but in a very fun shot, Arthur reaches for the witch's shoulder and the closer he gets, the larger a smile creeps across her face. I thought that was really cool. Yeah. No, it was great. Ash stops him just in time, though, telling him that it's a trick and asking him to get an axe. But before Arthur can do that, the witch lurches up, socking Ash in the face and throwing Arthur into a wall. She then lunges for Sheila, but a guard forces her back. <laughs> the witch then throws hot porridge into the guard's face. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I laugh so hard because he's Use like, I'm blind. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I am blind. <laughs> But he, he just falls to the ground and he keeps screaming that. And I was just laughing out loud. Yeah. But the blacksmith tries to rush her, but he gets knocked to the ground. But before he can get his own serving of that porridge, Ash blows the pot out of her hand with his shotgun. As he loads it, he tells her, again with the one-liners, yo, she bitch, let's go. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, with a dry, cool wit like that. Well, yeah. and, and once again, not shaken. No, nope. Not, he's just like, Oh, now her like wow. it's just like all right <laughs> he's done this before yeah. Yeah. yeah this is old hat but they go back and forth until ash trick shots her over his shoulder killing her but after he kills her he breathes in like so deeply yeah clearly proud of himself <laughs> yeah <laughs> and also a little amazed like it was i laughed out loud yeah. again the trick shot was a lot yeah. <laughs> it's like you're just showing off at this it was point. it was honestly unnecessary yeah. but it's ash I feel like you're going to hear that as an excuse a lot. Yeah. It's Ash. Yeah. It's funny, too, because they fought for a while before he shot her. Oh, yeah. It was comical to me because you have the shotgun, but he still chooses to punch and kick her for a while. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, all no, right. It's, yeah, he, you know, he's versatile. Yeah. It's like, we don't always have to rely he's on like, the He's like, I'm not yeah. hiding behind this. Yeah, like, no. I can hold my own. <laughs> But the wise man says that if the Necronomicon fell into the wrong hands, all of mankind could fall victim to this evil. He pleads with Ash one more time to quest for it, but Ash doesn't answer and instead just stares at his missing hand. We then cut to Ash and Sheila entering the forge with the blacksmith. The blacksmith crafts Ash a new hand out of old armor, eventually looking part chainmail, part almost like steampunk in its yeah. mechanics. Yeah. Um, there were a lot of zooms here that made me yeah. laugh. I loved it. <laughs> no, it yeah. was just back to back to mm, back to wow. back. <laughs> and why is Sheila still hanging? Like he is treating her like shit. I don't know why she's still. I, I'm not sure either. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure either. Um, maybe I, was self-esteem invented in the 1300s? <laughs> Um, I back to the zooms that you were talking about. They, I know they did some of this in Evil Dead too. Yeah, maybe a little in Evil Dead, but I feel like this had to be an influence on Edgar, Edgar Wright. Right, I knew you were gonna say that because that's exactly what it made me think yeah. of. And it's like I, I don't know why, but the way they do it and with the sound design, because they did the same thing when Ash was doing the chainsaw bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and in the shed. And I just, I, it's, it's great. Yeah. yeah. It's great. Well, in Spider-Man, he's got a couple of, zooms. <laughs> yes. it's just his style. It's so good. But Ash straps on his new hand, testing it out by crushing a chalice, which earns him a very dramatic gasp from Sheila yeah. <laughs> and the blacksmith too. They're both just like, oh. yeah. <laughs> but Ash takes another look at his hand and is only able to describe it in one word. Groovy iconic yeah. yeah i don't know about you guys i finished <laughs> oh my there, God. i was like all right <laughs> it's like what, at the hand yeah like, 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 oh yeah the, yeah, dead, the dead hand. Yeah. <laughs> right you see what he did that tell us <laughs> <laughs> it's like that could be me yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but later on <laughs> ash sits recalibrating his new hand as sheila walks in to talk to him I, I was I, I was like, that's a screwdriver. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He's holding a screwdriver. But <laughs> she stands at the door, Ash telling her to close it and asking if she was raised in a barn. As she walks towards him, he mutters under his breath that she probably was raised yeah. in a barn. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, oh my yeah. God. Yeah. Just dragging like, the shit <laughs> he, And the whole village, he goes along with all the other primitives. Yeah. It's like, Jesus <laughs> Christ. You're a guest. <laughs> yeah. I get that she wanted you dead, but it's in Beth Davis. Right. <laughs> <laughs> 
But she says that the wise man says that he's the promised one. And not only will he find the book and help them, but he'll lead their people against all the evil forces. But Ash just shuts that shit down, telling her that all he cares about is getting home. When she picks up something from his desk in front of him, he snatches it from her, (laughs) telling her that her primitive brain wouldn't understand it. Ash then asks what she's even doing here. (laughs) She tells him that she just wanted to tell him that all her hopes and her prayers are with him when he leaves in the morning and that she made him a garment. He snatches it from her, saying that, yeah, he could use a horse blanket. <laughs> I'm like, God damn, dude. Like, will you Fucking chill? Asshole. <laughs> Once again, everyone wanted you dead. Yes, yeah. You do her. not have yeah. this energy for anyone else. Got you a hand. Yeah. Now, you're all- <laughs> <laughs> now your ego is, yes. you know. <laughs> but very offended, she slaps him across the face and goes to storm out. Now, on commentary, Bruce Campbell was not told about this slap. Oh, sh- of course he wasn't. <laughs> and it was <laughs> Sam Raimi's like slap the, the shit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and dude, you hear it. Yeah, <laughs> it's clearly real. <laughs> but Ash jumps out of his seat and holds her in the doorway before she can leave. They stare longingly at each other as the wind blows and he lets her hair down. Yeah, <laughs> I was like, what the fuck? <laughs> what are we? <laughs> I don't know. But touching her face, he tells her. Give me some sugar, baby. <laughs> <laughs> and they kiss. I'm sure they fucked after. Uh, well, but I mean, yeah. All right. They, well, the, later the he, do- <laughs> yeah. he, to the- he does mention <laughs> some pillow talk yeah, later. So no, they definitely <laughs> fucked. But um, <laughs> I mean, we love a good enemies to lovers yeah. trope. But this was, this was, <laughs> it was weird. It this was, was dark. <laughs> and it was, it was very fast. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Um, what I love, I heard on commentary, Sam Raimi and Bruce Campbell were talking and I guess they were, (laughs) well, not they, but Bruce Campbell was very unsure about this line Yeah. because as they were filming, Raimi fed it to him and he was like, you know, say, give me some sugar, baby. (laughs) Yeah. And Bruce Campbell was like, are you out of your mind? (laughs) (laughs) But, and there's a lot of moments that end up like that, but they become these iconic <laughs> yes, Ash, yes. you know, lines. I'm sure at the time, though, it was probably like, you shit, sure you, you want me to say yeah. that? <laughs> and there's even more later that it's like, dude, because yeah. like, this is going to be on film forever. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but the next morning, Ash rides out with Arthur, the wise man, and a couple of guards. I wanted to kind of use this as a segue because Ash's outfit looks like his normal outfit, just yeah. medieval. <laughs> And I thought, I thought because it was the blue yeah. and the brown. But I learned that the costume designer of this film was Ida Guerin. And she actually worked with Bruce Campbell a year prior on this film. I think it was called Mind Warp. And while they were doing that film, they fell in love. And they got married right before the production began on Army of Darkness. Aww. And they're still married. Oh, nice. I thought that was like I yeah. love that. very, very right. sweet. But um, I think they had said, because on this little featurette, they were like, we decided to get married before Army of Darkness because when we saw what Sam Raimi had in mind, we didn't know if our marriage could survive. <laughs> <laughs> Army of Darkness. <laughs> <laughs> but they stop at a clearing, the horses acting a little spooked, with the wise man telling Ash that the path ahead leads to an unholy cemetery, which holds the Necronomicon. It made me laugh because it's like, you know where it is? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> we just can't get it. Yeah, we're just not a... <laughs> yeah, we're not going. No, no, no. Yeah. <laughs> but we saw what you can do. Yeah. <laughs> he tells them that upon seizing it, Ash must recite the words, Klaatu, Verata, Nikto. So this is a reference to the day the earth stood still. Right. And I don't understand because even the subtitles, it says burrata. Yeah. Yeah. Like this, the yes. delicious cheese. Yeah. Right. But, <laughs> but everybody in the film says burrata. Right. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. But um, we'll just let that go, uh, <laughs> I guess. But Ash repeats the words a couple times, but refuses to do it a third time when the wise man asks him to. He's really mean for no reason. Uh, he's got to get to work. No, 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 no. gets busy. Yeah. This is, I mean, dude, they're uh, like, where is Ash? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he's kind of run out of his personal time. Seriously, yeah. yeah he's, like, he's got about like four more hours. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but he reminds them that after he finds the book, they send him back. That's the deal. After that, he's history. 
I'd be like, gladly. <laughs> <laughs> like, You're being really rude right now. We saw you were talking to Sheila. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so we didn't like it. But he rides off on his white horse down the unholy path. So Bruce Campbell said that he barely knew how to ride a horse at this point. <laughs> yeah, of course. <laughs> of course. I think when he did Briscoe County Junior, he was taught for real. Yeah. But with this, like the stuntmen and the horse trainers were kind of making fun of him a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> but he, of course, fell off and was thrown from the horse several times. Well, because Sam Raimi told the horse yeah, to Yeah, I was going <laughs> to I wonder how much of that was him just like, D- do whatever. Yeah. He's fine. He just smacks the horse yeah. on the ass and he's like, ah! He's like, Bruce was talking a lot of shit about yeah. you. Yeah. <laughs> he was saying your teeth were funny. <laughs> <laughs> he said he wasn't going to feed you an apple after the shoot. <laughs> just pissing do, him off. Do with that what you will. Yeah. I'm just, yeah. I'm just letting you know what the man action. said. <laughs> <laughs> But later, Ash continues on through the trees and smoke, eerie noises and whispers surrounding him and his horse as they stop for a moment. Just then, the evil force glides through the woods at them, and Ash pulls on the horse's reins, causing it to do a 180 and run in the opposite direction. So this feels Evil Dead. Yes. Yeah. And it's like these little like tastes of it because they this film is so different. Oh, yeah. But you get like that little bit of the DNA. Still yeah. there. And you love it. Yeah. But the force continues on, splitting trees in pursuit of Ash. Ash, however, turns around to see the force gaining on him, and when he turns back around, collides face first with a branch, falling off his horse and into a large puddle. Yes, Bruce Campbell did this stunt. Of course yeah. he did. It's <laughs> just unbelievable. Yeah. He would do, I saw like, um, he was at some convention and it was one of his things like in the late 80s, early 90s. He can do this really amazing stunt where he just does a full front flip onto his spine. <laughs> <laughs> and people were asking him to do it and it was 92 he's like look i'm getting a little older yeah. <laughs> but he did it for them yeah. and then i think he did the rest of the event in a chair yeah. <laughs> but he's a man of the people <laughs> but he gets up and takes off running tumbling down a hill and rushing inside of a massive nearby windmill In a series of frantic shots, the evil force tries to break in as Ash uses his body as a barricade against the door. After a few violent attempts at breaking in, Ash screaming in fear, the evil force seems to just give up. It went on for a long time. It did. (laughs) It did, in all fairness. But, I mean, I again, I love it. Yeah, I was going to say, but, I mean, that's why I'm watching it. Right. This is what I want to see. I it's Evil Dead. I yeah. mean, you know, yeah. you want to see Ash in peril, you want to see him <laughs> very frightening. Yeah. <laughs> I did see in the featurette that the windmill is actually a miniature. All right. They said it was about 3 feet tall. <laughs> and so this is again a perspective yeah. shot. They use something later we'll talk about called introvision that I don't think is really as much in use anymore. Uh-huh. But it's pretty fucking intense yeah. like the amount that they use it right and the effectiveness at which they use it but we'll talk about that in just a little bit all right but later that night ash warms his hand by a fire that he's built but is startled when he sees another version of himself standing inside the windmill he instinctively rushes at himself and crashes into a mirror yeah <laughs> he doesn't have the best track record with when it comes to mirrors no, yeah. <laughs> let's just be honest i remember <laughs> i think it was the first evil dead where he reaches in and it's water yes yeah. and he's like yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's so like bruce campbell ladies and gentlemen <laughs> but ash falls to the ground surrounded by shattered glass he picks up a piece looking at it and merely seeing his own reflection in it He then throws it to the floor, but in the pieces of the broken mirror, we see the same reflection of Ash repeated several times. He turns back to the fire, but behind his back, several miniature versions of himself crawl out of the mirrors. The many, many ashes... That's that's, (laughs) that's good, that's good. (laughs) It's like, can I say it? Can I pull this off? (laughs) Some of them obviously played by Bruce Campbell, but others played by Deke Anderson, Bruce Thomas, and Jerry Rector snag a fork from the ground, the three of them picking it up. Now, the thing is, is that they're all clearly different people, Yeah. (laughs) but they're wearing like Bruce Campbell-esque prosthetics. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) So it's just like, they're like, no, just focus on the one in the front. Yeah. <laughs> It'll be fine. It'll be totally fine. The lead mini Ash, played by Bruce Campbell, calls out, 
ramming speed as they rush the fork right into Ash's butt cheek. <laughs> I'm you. Like, why Why are you doing this I don't to know. me? <laughs> <laughs> you know what I've been through, you know? <laughs> But Ash screams in pain, knocking his head on a support beam. Another set of mini Ashes fire his shotgun at him, but thankfully miss. Ash pulls the fork out of his ass, aims at the mini Ash, throwing it like a trident and killing him. The fact that he's not like, oh my God, yeah. <laughs> it's me or whatever. He's just like, all right, now I, now, <laughs> yeah. I get, now I gotta kill well, mini me's. He, he thought he was doing good by breaking the mirror. Yes. And yeah. I mean, it didn't work out. It did uh, not. It's, it's par for the course yeah. for him, dude. Like, this is just another thing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but he is promptly tripped by a broom, landing face first on a furnace and having to pry himself off of it. The mini ashes are fucking dying at this. They love it. <laughs> But the regular sized ash is over it. And yes, nay, the mini ashes love it. <laughs> <laughs> as soon as I said it, I was like, no, 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 no. no, no. no. <laughs> <laughs> but Ash begins to sing London Bridge and attempts to step on one of them, who defends himself with a nail, jamming it right into Ash's foot. They mockingly sing My Fair Lady at him, finishing the line of the song. This was uh, the line. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> because this is your stop i was like <laughs> i was like when they came out of the mirror yeah i'm like okay this is a little cartoony just because they're all like baby bruce or baby the, ashes yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah so um they're gonna be silly right, you know what right. i mean i'm like okay this is a little cartoony but that is still a frightening concept yeah yeah for sure that they all came out of a shard. Like, that's terrifying. Yeah. And then they're stabbing him in the ass. I'm like, okay, this is funny. The My Fair Lady yeah, is what I'm like, okay, <laughs> so we're just in Silly Town. Like, <laughs> I, should, I, I know exactly where we are now. It was like seeing a, a street sign. Yes. All right. oh, now we we've go. arrived. Yeah. Okay, I know exactly where I am, and I'm not going to expect <laughs> no. anything different. And I was like, well, do they know what he knows? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they must. I was like that, oh and God. they were yeah, they knew <laughs> on each other's shoulders, dancing a jig. They're having the they fucking time of their with, lives. Ha, like, <laughs> yeah. they're, they're loving it. They love it. They do. <laughs> but Ash tries to get to his feet, but he passes out instead. When he wakes up, he thinks that he's just had a nightmare. But the camera pulls back to reveal that Ash has been tied to the floor, Gulliver's travel style. That's terrifying. Yes. Yes. The mini ashes close Ash's nose, forcing him to open his mouth, and another mini ash seizes the opportunity to swan dive down Ash's throat. Ash wriggles free from the ropes, and the mini ashes freak out and run away. Feeling the mini ash fucking about his vital organs, Ash reaches for a pot of boiling water, offering the intruder a little taste of hot chocolate before downing it. I feel like that's going to hurt you just yeah. as much as it hurts him. It is a yeah. twofer. It's if my coffee's too hot, I'm like, ah. Oh, damn. <laughs> I mean, yeah, but if you're killing a little nay or whatever. Like, yeah. I guess. That's like punching your spleen or, <laughs> or whatever it's doing in there. And I do got to say, I, I the way that they shot this, I was worried that the yes, water was actually was hot. Actually, yeah, yeah. yeah. And I could see Sam, Sam Raimi was like, drink yeah, it. switching it out. He's like, no, we're doing this shit. <laughs> I just, it's not like pouring water into a bowl like i mean no, it's, I mean, not just gonna, it's, it's not pulling just it into a bruise <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah that's true that is true it's not just gonna flood your insides with <laughs> but whatever well but it i mean it kind of works yeah <laughs> it did work it did yes the point it doesn't seem to completely work though <laughs> yeah <laughs> because ash starts to have involuntary spasms in his arm he fights against them but suddenly a giant eye pops open on his shoulder Ash runs outside as it continues to grow. <laughs> I think he says something like, it's getting bigger. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Just so we know. Like, oh, okay, yeah. cool. But under the lights of the moon, we see a second Ash growing out of Ash's torso. Ash engages in some Three Stooges style hijinks with his doppelganger, and they fight against each other until the second Ash eventually separates into his own fully formed being. Ash asks who he is, and he explains that he is bad Ash, while our Ash is good Ash. He's like, you're good Ash. I'm annoying Ash. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's a lot of things that he could, <laughs> he could kind of chill out a little bit on <laughs> some of this. But bad Ash dances a little jig, 
calling Ash a little goody two shoes while randomly striking him in the face. <laughs> It's a lot. Yeah. Oh, well, he's bad ass. Yeah. Know, yeah. So. yeah. <laughs> and, Among other things. Yeah. <laughs> and that's not a Sean Connery impression. He's bad. Oh, no, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but eventually Ash grows tired of this and just blasts bad Ash in the face with the shotgun, sending him flying. Ash puts the shotgun over his shoulder and says, good, bad. I'm the guy with the gun. Yeah. He can only speak in like action. Yeah. <laughs> One letter. Uh, bad Ash had it coming. He did. Like, yeah. I will weep. I will not weep. <laughs> so, <laughs> so what happens when that happens to you? But it's like, I'm I'm bad so-and-so and you're bad. Wait. Oh, wait a minute. It's like, well, <laughs> what the fuck do we do <laughs> now? I guess we're a tag team yeah, now. Go get coffee. Yeah. All Hang right. Out. Yeah, that sounds good. Chat about all the evil shit yeah. you've done. <laughs> <laughs> so again, the good, bad, I'm the guy with the gun. Yeah. yeah. The original, I guess the line that they had in the first bit. Oh, no. <laughs> which is an inferior line, but it's in the director's cut. Ash just goes, I'm not that good. <laughs> <laughs> I, I like this better. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's fucking <laughs> hilarious. But <laughs> this sequence with the mini ashes and a ton of stuff that we see later, like I talked about, were filmed using something called IntroVision. All right. And it was basically a process at the time that kind of allowed you to combine still shots of miniatures uh -huh. or fully filmed sequences as a projection in the background. And then you film your actors in the foreground and you combine them together. All right. You can see that it's kind of layered. Yeah. It's a little different. Yeah. 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 Uh, some of them look like there's a battle sequence we'll get to later that looks really good. Yeah. Yeah. But then some of them you can see it's like a different grain. Yeah. yeah. And it's like pretty clear. But I did see in a news package from CNN from 1992 that said two thirds of Army of Darkness was filmed using IntroVision. Holy Damn, shit! All right. So it was like a big deal. Yeah. You know the train sequence in um, Stand by Me? Yeah. That's IntroVision. Wow, all that right. looks good yeah. too. Because I I remember watching that for the first time. I'm like, are those kids I'm in trouble? About, <laughs> I'm worried about them. <laughs> yeah. But Has obviously, anyone heard from Corey Feldman? <laughs> <Corey Feldman? laughs> <laughs> um, I would imagine <laughs> that with all the green screen stuff they do now, this yeah. is unused right? Uh, these days. And it, I will admit, it is technically impressive. Yeah. It's very fun, but I, f I feel like this might have been a little too silly for me. <laughs> <laughs> this, this was a lot. This whole, the baby ashes, like this whole part was just hilarious. Yeah. I think that the other, the, the first two films, I mean, there was a little, very little humor in The Evil Dead. Right. There was a lot more humor in Evil Dead 2. Mm. And I feel like the slapstick stuff, like he's bashing plates over his face and stuff, yeah. Yeah, yeah. fighting against his own hand. I felt like it was more, maybe it was more balanced because the horror was so horrific. Yeah, no, yeah, yeah. And I feel like the horror in this is really toned it's down. It's not enough to oh, balance no, yeah. it. Yeah. yeah, but I mean, it's 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 fun. No, I <laughs> loved it. Like, I I... It is very silly, but I don't know. It's something about it that the same reason why I guess I still will watch Three Stooges. I'm right. like, I know yeah. it's silly, but it's like, that's fantastic. Slap them again. And that's this. It's like that, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's, yeah. That's what's happening right now. You can feel the influence. Oh, yeah. <laughs> 100%. <laughs> but Ash drags Bad Ash's body away. And in a recreation of the chain scene from The Evil Dead, chains him to a plank of wood outside of the windmill. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, who dragged that ash away? No. Because <laughs> he looked like Walton Goggins. <laughs> I don't think that was you, his skill. You weren't supposed to be looking yeah. there. <laughs> that's, that's your fault. Yeah. <laughs> My bad. I will say, and again, this is going back to the Evil Dead. Right. Where they said bodily dismemberment. Yeah. He's following the yeah. rules. Yeah. yeah. Which is, again, pretty cool. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. But as Bad Ash screeches a demonic wail, Ash saws him up with the chainsaw. Afterward, he chucks a burlap sack full of Bad Ash's body parts into a freshly dug grave. Bad Ash's head pops out, taunting Ash that he'll die in the graveyard before he ever retrieves the Necronomicon. Ash snarkily taunts him back, throwing a shovel full of dirt onto his face and burying him. Again, that was not told that was going to happen. <laughs> and guess who threw the dirt? <laughs> <laughs> of course <laughs> that's the greatest shit when i was younger me and my brother used to say that to each other and hmm. then throw something at each other <laughs> hey you got a little something on your face <laughs> but it's like like i said watching this as a kid and then seeing like shit yeah. like this 
yeah, it's silly, but it's it cements itself in your of mind. Of course. And it's like, that's fantastic. Yeah, I know that's silly as shit. Mm-hmm. But he really dead ass just fucking is making fun of himself. <laughs> he is. And being, yeah, <laughs> being mean to himself yeah. this whole time. <laughs> Bruce Campbell's like, are we still friends? Yeah, yeah dude. Like, <laughs> did I upset what you? What is going on? <laughs> <laughs> but Bad Ash promises that he'll come back for him as Ash plants a crucifix grave marker in the dirt. Lightning flashes and thunder crackles as Ash makes his exit from the windmill, riding triumphantly through the night as he finally reaches the graveyard. He walks through the gates, slowly ascending a staircase as light shines down on the Necronomicon, which rests on a stone altar. There is also a skull on the ground. It like creaks his jaw open at yeah. him. It looked surprised to see him. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> He's like the chosen one. Yeah. <laughs> but when Ash reaches the altar, he sees that there are three books. Man, nobody said anything about no. that. No. Which is not fair because Mr. Pitt seemed to know a lot. Yeah. He's like, it's over there. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> he never said they're over there. Yeah. I did want to talk about um, the book itself, though. Yeah. Tony Trimbley had said that they redesigned the books Mm -hmm. because we were talking off mic. They look completely different than the Necronomicon we're used to. And it's because Sam Raimi wanted them larger for what we're about to see. Right. So it makes sense. Yeah. But he said that they also recreated an entire book fully written, all the pages filled. And when they go to use it for the film, nobody can find it. What the fuck? <laughs> yeah, and so that that version of the Necronomicon never ends up in this film. Wow. And I wonder if somebody has somebody it. Somebody took yeah. it. Yeah. Oh, I bet. Which is yeah. really fucked like, up. This yeah. is really cool. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Can we at least get the shot first? Yeah. <laughs> Thank God damn. <laughs> but Ash stands confused for a moment, again, annoyed that nobody warned him about this, and he's unsure what to do. He decides to open the first book, which is revealed to be a portal. It starts to suck Ash inside, arms first, elongating them as he tries to pull them away. Eventually, he's sucked inside completely as the book slams shut. Now you got a lawsuit on your (laughs) (laughs) But after a moment, he's able to pull himself out. But as he does, his face is elongated by the vacuum of the portal. He gets out and shakes his head around, and it takes a few tries before he returns back to normal. I was like, this is a live action cartoon. It is. Yeah. Yeah. And what makes me laugh is after all of that, Mm -hmm. Ash is only able to comment, whoa, wrong book. (laughs) (laughs) He rolls with the punches. (laughs) But he then goes for the second book, but hesitates and reaches for the third book instead. But before he picks it up, he gives a little look like, eh, nice try. (laughs) And then goes for the second book. (laughs) I was like, what are you doing? (laughs) But as soon as he reaches for it, the face on the cover sinks its teeth into his fingers. Ash eventually shakes himself free, but the book rises up and swoops down on him like a bird. He struggles against it, throwing it away one more time before it finally floats down to the spot he picked it up from. And of course, you can guess who is operating the book on the stick. (laughs) (laughs) That was beating the fuck out of him. (laughs) Do I need to say? I'm sensing a theme here. If he's getting hurt. (laughs) But Ash acknowledges unfinished business with the second book before setting his sights on the third. He's like, I'm coming back. (laughs) But he goes to open it, but then remembers the words the wise man told him to say. He says, clot to Verada. But the third word escapes him. He's like, necktie? Nectar? Ash. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sir. These are words you know. You know yeah. goddamn well. <laughs> but he can't place it, and he says that it's definitely an N-word and tries to remember. He then looks around nervously. I gotta okay, say, I was... I was <laughs> <laughs> the 90s were an odd time for comedy, and I was very, very afraid. <laughs> I was uh, the gif of Jordan Peele sweating. Yes. Like, I was like, please fucking don't. I, I was like, don't make me be the gif of Wesley Snipes crying. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, don't make me do this to you, Ash. I don't, I don't want to have to do this. <laughs> but everything's fine. Yes, everything's, everything's fine. fine. <laughs> everything's fine. Thankfully, Ash just says, clot to verada and then he makes the sound of the letter in but just coughs over the rest 
<laughs> but this is why you should have practiced. Oh, yeah. He was trying he to help you, you yeah. and then you wanted to have an attitude about it. Uh-huh. Like, why? Remember, Look at where you are right now. Four hours, he's got to get to work. <laughs> yeah. 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 Like, we have time yeah. to be have time. repeating shit. <laughs> I think that's what I love about Ash is that he is he's kind of a lovable goof. Yeah. Like he he's clumsy. Yeah, no, he fucks yeah. up. Fucks up. But I was like, the cough, I don't think that's gonna fool whatever you're yeah. <laughs> uh, trying to appease. I don't think that's gonna work. Well, he pretends that it's good enough. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then he just picks up the book. But unfortunately, thunder crackles and the ground begins to shake. He insists that he said the words as gravestones shoot up into the sky. So now you're going to lie? Yeah. <laughs> like, I don't, they're going to be like, oh, my oh, bad. Oh, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> we'll put these back. <laughs> so this sequence was filmed on a set in Hollywood. All right. And the graveyard, this is what is so interesting to me. The graveyard was mostly a miniature set. Right. Except for the altar where Ash is standing to pick up the book. Okay. And so this is the Intravision stuff. Ah, uh, That right. is so cool. I could not tell. No. no. Uh-uh. I thought they built a whole set. Yeah. It's that's very what effective. It looks like. yeah. yeah. But lightning strikes at the castle and Arthur tells the villagers to seek cover and protect their children. They're like, Ash fucked up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It made me laugh because the wise man rushes outside and he's like, something's wrong. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he didn't say it. Yeah, he, I told him to repeat I it. I told him. Motherfucker. But this is when lightning strikes again, sending a guard into the air, which people don't react to. No. He's <laughs> like, all right, shit. But Sheila rushes out too, her face full of worry. But back at the graveyard, Ash tries to rush away, but skeletal arms reach out from the ground and pull him down, grabbing him by the face and holding his legs. They slam his face into rocks, pull his mouth open, hook his nostril. They just beat the shit out of him. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Basically. Uh, these little skeleton hands are really aggressive. Yes. But mm-hmm. did anyone else think they were cute? Oh, of course. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> I got to tell you, the skeleton. I love yeah. every skeleton in this. Fantastic. And, and later, I'm like, this is the greatest thing yeah. ever. Yes. <laughs> but after some more Three Stooges style hijinks, Ash is promptly punched down the throat. He's able to get up, though, snagging the book and running away as fast as he can. He hops back onto the back of his horse and rides away, and he says that he's sick of being their garbage boy. He did his part, and now he wants back. I laughed out loud because as he's riding, he growls, like in the deal. Yeah. (laughs) I'm like, what? (laughs) He wants to go home. (laughs) I get it, but (laughs) Jesus Christ. Oh, he just had. I gotta clock in. Yeah, Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) he just had a tiny skeleton hand in his mouth. That is (laughs) true. Maybe he scratched his teeth. Yeah, Yeah. (laughs) that's why he was so raspy. Yeah. (laughs) But lightning also strikes the cross that he planted for Bad Ash, which causes him to wake up, rising from the dead as Evil Ash. His face shotgun blasted and his demonic eyes determined as he announces, I live again. Damn it, lightning. Yeah. <laughs> it was uh, funny to me that he erected a cross. He did. Well, yeah. he's like, got to pay your respects. Yeah. <laughs> this is it me. Is me. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's this whole little scene, like a whole thing here. It is very silly, but but it's fucking great it like, it's it's a lot of like you said slapstick they're beating yes. his ass but i i still when i was watching it i was like man this is fucking this is great i was like this is funny as shit i don't know i feel like i'm just weird because i'm very i guess selective on the slapstick yeah. <laughs> <laughs> because whenever it was the mini ashes and like the little goody two shoes yeah, yeah. i was like all right all right yeah, yeah. you're <laughs> doing a lot but when the skeletons are fucking doing the two eye poke I'm like, yeah. yeah do it again yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I have, grab this tongue. Yeah, <laughs> I have no like <laughs> consistency. I think the skeletons just get a pass. Maybe that's what it is. Maybe All that's right. it. <laughs> but Ash rides back to the castle, Gold Tooth announcing his return. They raise the gates for Ash, closing them as he arrives inside and steps off the horse. The villagers give him a hero's welcome, overjoyed that he's retrieved the Necronomicon. They, one of their people just got blasted off yeah. <laughs> by lightning. <laughs> they, no, that's not, They're just like, oh, yeah, Ash is back. That's not back. important. Yeah. <laughs> he's just singed over there. <laughs> <laughs> but Ash brushes past them like, all right, all right. But they continue at him until he's like, get the fuck out of my face. Yeah. <laughs> 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 and again, I'm like, dude, he is just himself. Yeah. Unapologetically. 
<laughs> but he kneels down into a trough, pouring water on his head when the wise man approaches, asking if he's brought the Necronomicon. Ash says that he did. It's just that, but he breezes past that, just handing him the book. I'd be like, okay, I did get into a fight with some skeletons. Yeah. And then before that, there was another version of me that I had yes. to kill yeah. and bear. He's just like, here's your book. Yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> well, like in the deal. Yeah. <laughs> That's all he cares about. There's just a lot more to the story. Yeah, there is. But the wise man asks him concretely if he said the words. Ash dances around it saying, yeah, he basically said them. That's not the, yeah. same. It's not the same thing. Maybe not every syllable. Yeah. Or... <laughs> he says, basically. But the wise man calls him a dung-eating fool and says that when he misspoke the words, he awoke the dead. While it's true that the book still possesses the power to send Ash back to his time, the evil forces have a hunger for the Necronomicon and will do whatever it takes to get it. Ash reminds him... That they had a deal. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, so just send me back yeah, real quick he, then. Yeah. <laughs> he did his part, so he deserves to be sent back. He did not fully do his part. He, maybe he not mostly did. Yeah. Yeah. He, yeah. he mostly did. Yeah. Like, He's 75 like, I have a, I have a cough. Yeah. I have yeah. a cough. <laughs> I got punched down the throat yeah. by a fucking skeleton <laughs> arm. But Arthur sidles up, telling Ash that they will honor their deal. But as Ash sheepishly tries to accept this, he sees the entire village turn against him, feeling that they've been misled. They thought that he was the chosen one, but this kind of isn't chosen one behavior. No. Arthur says the wise men were fools to trust in him, and the wise man himself calls Ash a wretched excuse for a man. God. (laughs) (laughs) He's like, but are you sending me back? Yeah. (laughs) Though everyone else feels that Ash has let them down, Sheila approaches him, saying that she still believes that he'll help them. Ash levels with her, though. It's over. He did not have what it took. Come on, man. You just went and got the book and all I, that. I mean, some you of might it. not have said all of it, but <laughs> I mean, yeah. He's like, you, who cares? Yeah, you still came back with the book. <laughs> <laughs> he seems so upset. I'm like, you did a lot. Yeah. Well, you, you did a lot did, more yeah. than I could do. I'm not just fighting myself. That's, yeah. that's true. I'm crying. I'm still <laughs> in the windmill. <laughs> But he says his goodbyes, but Sheila isn't having it. She asks, what of all the things that he shared with her, the sweet words that he told her in private? Ash, (laughs) he's overcome and he's like, that was just pillow talk, baby. (laughs) Ash said, oh, oh, Sheila. (laughs) I'm like, when did the pillow talk happen? (laughs) Well, we we agreed. (laughs) We panned away. (laughs) (laughs) But Sheila says that it was more than that. She still has faith in him, but Ash gives a look like, "Mm -hmm." (laughs) and so she just turns away from him betrayed, calling him a coward. Just then, a winged deadite played by Nadine Gryken appears in the sky overhead. The villagers disperse as Sheila screams and the winged deadite descends on her. As she screams for Ash, he screams back for her, but the winged deadite just scoops her up and Ash's attempts to rescue her are futile. They just let it happen. Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah I was gonna say, nobody's gonna cool, fire yeah. any arrows. <laughs> well, that made me laugh because the archers are ready, but Arthur's like, "No, you might hit her." <laughs> yeah, <laughs> don't he don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> They're just like, "No." Yeah. Ash does rush up the steps of the castle, stealing a knight's sword on the way, and he swipes at the creature just as it exits the castle's walls with Sheila. He screams, "Damn you!" into the night. But back at the graveyard. After some neat shots of stones and moss-covered sculptures, Evil Ash, now wearing armor and a skull helmet, commands an army of skeletons, dead soldiers from past wars, with plans to storm the castle to retrieve the Necronomicon. And again, I understand that I called some things too silly. I can't express how much I love all these skeletons. Yeah, (laughs) Yeah, no, it's great. And it's stop motion. Yeah. It's a combination of like puppetry. It's brilliant. Uh, my thing is that I know it's silly, but they put a lot of fucking work into this. Yeah. They did. So it doesn't matter how silly it is. Like y'all worked your fucking ass off to make all these skeletons come alive. All these scenes happen the right way they're supposed to happen. Yes. And it all makes sense. And it shows. Yeah. Oh, yeah. But the skeletons dig up the graves and open the coffins of their fallen comrades, welcoming them back to the world of the living, grabbing shovels and continue digging. That was their run from the yeah. <laughs> <laughs> But one of the skeletons calls for Sheila, who is thrown at the feet of evil Ash. 
as she peers up at him, he strikes a pose telling her, give me some sugar, baby. You weren't there for that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's in his DNA. Oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah, like if you know about London Bridge, I guess you yeah. know, know about that. <laughs> but Sheila screams as evil Ash seizes her, calling her a sweet little thing and forcing a kiss on her lips. The other skeletons lead scantily clad women away, saying that they have plans for them as evil Ash continues kissing Sheila, tearing her gown. So are these women from the kingdom? I don't know. Like, where did yeah, they yeah. come from? They have not explained always, it. Yeah, at all. I only saw Sheila get taken. Yeah. And yeah, that was it. There's only one swooping deadite, but okay. Um, the camera rises and you see the whole skeletal army in the background continuing to work. That was all stop motion on IntroVision. Oh, wow. And they said it took 36 hours to animate. Ooh. God damn. But it's, it's great. Yeah, and, oh, it no, is. Yeah. And the way they're able to like mix everything together yeah. it's just it's fantastic you don't see that anymore yeah no i kind of miss it well because it's like we don't have to work that hard anymore you no. know what i mean like you'll act opposite a tennis ball and you'll like it know, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but back at the castle the men raise their banners as a scout rides in on a horse he rushes off and kneels before arthur who tells him to arise the scout tells him that an army of the dead is gathering in the wilderness and will soon approach the castle. They're about two days' ride away. Arthur is concerned, realizing that the winged deadites were only the first of them, and the wise man suggests that they should leave as soon as possible, Goldtooth saying that they'll be safe in the mountains. Cowardly warrior, played by Ted Raimi. Yes! <laughs> I was like, Ted Raimi? Doesn't Ted Raimi play like four yes, characters? Yes, he does. Yeah. Four characters he play, in and then he voices deadites and like, <laughs> he was very busy. They put him to work. <laughs> but the cowardly soldier agrees with any plan that means that they'll flee. The conversation grows more and more frantic as fear takes the men, but suddenly, a gunshot blasts into the night. Ash stands atop the castle wall, smoke billowing around him. He says they can run home and cry to mama, but he's through running, saying that they should stay here and fight it out. You wanted to go home five minutes ago, Oh, he dude? did. Yeah. He yeah. did. <laughs> he's had a change of he, heart. Yeah. <laughs> Sheila leaving. Kinda yeah. Changed his mind. But Arthur asks if all the men from the future are loudmouth braggarts, but Ash says, no, just him, baby. <laughs> oh, yeah. Just like, him. Damn right. <laughs> Arthur asks how they're supposed to defend themselves from the Deadites, considering most of their people have fled, and Ash suggests that Henry the Red and his men could fight with them. There, There is a scene that is cut later that we'll talk about, but um, let... I don't know when conversations are had. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Do, do they send a raven? Yeah. <laughs> He's like, oh no, I saved his life. He yeah. will fight for us. He's on my speed dial. <laughs> But Ash asks loudly and heroically, now who's with me? One by one, the men slowly join in, offering their services until they all begin to chant, Hail. Arthur does not join in on this. One of the men who <laughs> does join in on this, though, is Ted Raimi in another role. <laughs> <laughs> it made me laugh out loud because he was just the cowardly this soldier the yeah. and then like not even five seconds later he goes you can count on my steel I'm like but you're wearing a different wig <laughs> like, were we not supposed to notice <laughs> it's so fucking funny but <laughs> elsewhere evil ash assembles his army of darkness he tells a veiled sheila to say hello to the boys when she removes her veil, we see that she is now a deadite. She says that she may be bad, but she feels good. No. Yeah. Oh, no, I love it. <laughs> it's great. And I love how game she is. Yeah. Because yeah. she does some like real deadite acting yeah. later. And oh, it's yeah. like, hell yeah, dude. I did laugh because after she unveils herself, one of the skeletons goes, now that's a sight for sore bones. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, come that's on. What I'm saying. Even the side chatter and it's, shit that they say. No, it's great. Fuck. <laughs> it doesn't even make sense. No, it doesn't. <laughs> well, I guess his sockets. If you're a skeleton, I yeah, guess. Yeah, I guess it kind of does. <laughs> oh, my God. That's but amazing. But I, I cracked up. <laughs> Evil Ash asks his men who rules, and they tell him that he does, and move forward toward the castle. Back at the castle, the men retrieve the delta and ride it back to Ash like a carriage. Ash finds some old supplies in the back, some rope, some shells, and a chemistry book. 
He gets to work removing the engine block from the Delta and raising it on a rope. He then takes the chemistry book to the wise men, and they're all able to synthesize gunpowder. There's almost an accident with the wise men. Yeah. <laughs> the wise men, he like almost holds it over fire, and Ash is like, no, 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 no. no, no. no. <laughs> <laughs> But <laughs> the next morning, because remember, it's two days right away. Yeah. Ash shows the men how to fight hand to hand combat with some synchronized spear training. And he seems very proud of the men's progress. This um, montage is mm. everything. Oh, yeah. it's great. Um, but it did make me laugh because if I'm carried away by a winged creature. Yeah. Please come after me the same night. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was watching him train people that I yeah. like, excuse me? <laughs> well, we're training to go save you. No, yeah. just, I'm dead already. Like, well, that's well, true. Just, yeah. it, but we don't know that. Yeah. I, I was laughing out loud, though, because of that. And I'm like, man, she's like, well, she's a full dead eye now. She seems to be enjoying it. Yeah. But they're at the castle and it's like, Choplo, Roblo, yes. <laughs> Chadlo. I'm like, dude, no, don't fucking <laughs> get, get, get Sheila. <laughs> She's like, no, Ash will come. Yeah, I'll be fine. He'll come. He'll be uh, fine. Any, any minute now. Oh, I guess I'm a ghoul now. So. <laughs> oh, I'm a dead eye. Cool. Great. Fantastic. But that night, the scout returns, alerting the men of the dead eye's arrival. Ash watches from the top of the castle, realizing just how many there are. He seems confident for a moment that his men can protect the Necronomicon, but then promptly loses all of that confidence. The skeletal army approaches, some playing femur flutes, skull drums, and bagpipes in a song titled March of the Dead. I love everything about this. Oh, yeah. This was amazing. Like, they did not have to do this. No, they did not. <laughs> and they did. Like, I loved every second of this oh, march. No, yeah. no, they did it for us, I think. Hell, yeah. Um, we were talking earlier about the score. This is the song that Danny Elfman Amazing. All right. Amazing. <laughs> All the other music is done by Joseph LaDuca who scored the first two Evil Dead films. All right. So there's some continuity. Yeah. But um, this song is fantastic. Yes. And seeing them play the instruments is just yes. the cherry on top. Oh, yeah. But Ash calls them into their battle stations and raises stones above the entrances, preparing for the attack. Outside the walls, Evil Ash stops his men in their tracks as they observe the castle. We pan over various intricately designed deadite soldiers as they hiss dead breath and wait for their next order. They had said on that featurette that they have about individually 175 different designs. Damn. Wow. And <laughs> it's unbelievable. Yeah. And as you scan across, you see that they're very different. Yeah. Yeah. You see some that are people in costumes and others yeah. that are puppets, but they yeah. all look fucking great. They do. Yeah. yeah. And they said that they had, I guess, dug out a lot of the ground so mm -hmm. that the puppeteers could move. Oh, no. It's like, it's just <laughs> very that's well so done. Yeah. Cool. And the sequence that's coming up, the coordinates. Nation. Oh, I know. Yeah. It must have yeah. been fucking crazy. They had said, I guess Sam Raimi had a all cameras running approach where shit is just happening. And it's like, we get this, we get that, then we oh, get this hell, and that. Yeah. And so <laughs> there's no like, okay, cut, we're going to try to get a close up on this skeleton screaming. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's like, just shoot everything. <laughs> yeah. And it works very hell, well. Yeah. They're like, but beat Bruce's ass. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Don't forget but that. But mostly <laughs> fuck him up. <laughs> But through their raised swords, the camera travels up a hill to find Evil Ash and Sheila on horseback. Evil Ash calls for his scout, who tells him where they're most likely keeping the Necronomicon and says that they'll have to breach the walls of the castle. This scout is clearly a puppet, Yeah. but I love the way he talks. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> it, it looks so great. I just love it. The guy that's next to him, the deadite captain yeah. with the eye patch, he's played by Bill Mosley. Really? I saw that and I was looking. Yes. I, I could not find Bill Mosley at all. Is he recognizable at all? Oh, not at all. Yeah. Okay. I was like, I was like looking for skeleton. him. Yeah. 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 And his is like a full makeup. That yeah. is so fucking cool. I guess he had more lines. There, There's a moment later where he screams, forward! And yeah. it sounds like Otis. <laughs> I was going <laughs> to say, if he talks. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> there you are. Yes. It's, it's just interesting. I guess he wrote a letter to Sam Raimi. And he was like, I played Chop Top and Chainsaw 2. Yeah. I love the two Evil Dead films. If you do another one, I'd love to be a part of it. Yeah. That is so oh, yeah. cool. That's it. That's so cool. But Evil Ash tells his men to bring him forth into the castle. And as he waits on the hill with Sheila, all his men charge forward. And that's when he screams. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but Ash readies the archers, a man lighting their arrows, or according to Arthur, the torch boy. All right. That's just demeaning, <laughs> I think. 
But in suspenseful back and forth shots, Ash waits until the right moment, Arthur beginning to sweat. At just the right time, though, they let loose with their arrows, exploding the front line triumphantly. They fucked those skeletons up. It is nuts. And it's so funny to me because they said Universal came in and they were like, look, you're you have about 10 minutes of skeletons exploding. (laughs) (laughs) We have to shave that down. And they said, look, says who? Exactly. (laughs) I guess Bruce Campbell and Sam Raymond were like, look. Our only argument was that it looks really cool. Yeah. yeah. They're like, we had to cut some of it All down. Right. But there's a lot here. Yeah. And it's great. There's a certain point where I'm like, I'm just watching the war. Yeah. yeah. I don't, I'm, I'm just sucked in. Seriously. Yeah. Evil Ash takes this poorly, but Ash and his men cheer. The celebration is short lived, though, when Ash is told that a battalion of soldiers are approaching the south. The dead soldiers ride forth with a wooden battering ram as Ash orders his men to the catapults. Arthur seconds the order, and they light bags of gunpowder, launching them at the dead, sending them flying and bones scattering. There's a really cool POV shot. Yeah. From, I guess, the perspective of the gunpowder. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Why not? It's it's great. But Ash affectionately smacks Arthur's armor and immediately regrets doing so. I'm like, dude, (laughs) be friends. I know. Just get over it. You're comrades now. But evil Ash grows angrier and angrier at his troops, accidentally fucking up his own jaw yeah. <laughs> yeah. as he orders them forward. A group of stop motion skeletons ready a bridge for the battering ram as the knights defend from the other side of the wall. Again, I love it. Yeah. Yeah. This Game of Thrones episode is <laughs> fucking wild. Is this better than anything they did in the last season? <laughs> <laughs> I'm sad again. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> No, Kit said, remember it got uh, didn't happen. Yeah, yeah. Canceled. yeah. they canceled after season five. <laughs> <laughs> Very strange. But the Deadites push forward, smashing into the door as Ash and his men drop boulders on them from above. Evil Ash then readies his archers and they take out a few of the men on the wall. After the Deadite captain tells his men to put their backbones into the battering ram, they finally smash through the door. Evil Ash lets out a war cry as his men breach the castle. Now, this war cry is hilarious because his mouthpiece does not move. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's just, it's as yeah. is. <laughs> I don't know if I said earlier, but I love the design of Evil Ash. Yeah. yeah. It looks great. The makeup is fantastic. Mm-hmm. But aside, aside from the mouthpiece not moving. <laughs> 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 but maybe he locked it in when he couldn't say forward. Yeah. Well, yeah, that's what happened. Plus, right. I'm sure he's, there's a lot going on with this yes. makeup. Yes. Absolutely. <laughs> like, it's the best we could do. Yeah. <laughs> But the men engage in combat with the encroaching skeletons using the moves that Ash taught them and fucking up the front line. I was like, okay, took down the whole front (laughs) row. Where did Ash learn all this? That's a great question. I don't know. It's S-Mart training. Yes. (laughs) We never saw him do this in either of them. No. (laughs) But Arthur urges the men to protect the book as more and more skeletal soldiers pour in. One of there's one soldier and he's very tight shot of him taking a sword to the chest. Oh, yeah. It's Bruce Campbell's dad. Oh, oh. really? <laughs> yeah. I thought that was so great. All right. I think they said his brother also played a soldier. That's Man, adorable. Yeah. It's a family affair. Well, with all of the Raimis here, yeah. too. Yeah. You know? <laughs> it's like, if you can have your brother 12 yeah, times. That- <laughs> yeah. I, my dad can come in for one scene. <laughs> But this is when Ash rides out in his secret weapon, the souped-up Delta, complete with rotating blades and a pointed front bumper. The men cheer as Ash smashes and cuts through the dead, welcoming them to the 21st century. I mean, it's not. No, it's not. (laughs) Don't don't tell him that. (laughs) But we get some great shots of Ash making short work of the skeletons, some of them clearly miniatures, but who cares? Mm -hmm. Who cares? I did laugh because there is a steam like whistle yeah attached to his uh new souped up car and i was gonna make a flintstones reference but then i remembered that that was actually from the simpsons parody of the flintstones <laughs> <laughs> because the flintstones used the bird yeah <laughs> they did not have steam power or anything yet <laughs> but ash gets medieval on all their asses but suddenly sheila appears in the middle of the battlefield Time slows down as she holds out her arms, appearing completely normal and locking eyes with Ash. Ash raises his goggles. No, I don't know where he got goggles. (laughs) (laughs) But he realizes that it's her. He swerves out of the way to miss her and bails out of the Delta, causing it to crash and burn flipped on its side next to Sheila. 
The battle continues with the Deadites securing the courtyard. This is another Bill Mosley line. <laughs> <laughs> but the Delta explodes as Sheila, now full Deadite again, attacks Ash with a spear. He narrowly misses getting stabbed in the face and or crotch, and then he kicks her away, launching her down into the pit. He then rescues a woman from a skeleton soldier and gives another deadite a straight up backbreaker. Yeah. Like, just, just straight up a backbreaker. I can honestly watch Ash fight a skeleton for, yeah. real. for however long they want to show it to me. I did. Okay. So this is what I was talking about earlier where I said that it seemed absurd, but it could fit into the movie. Right. They said, I guess Sam Raimi was like, okay, and then in this scene, whenever they come in and breach, what I want you to do is I want you to form a line with some of the skeleton soldiers, and then I want you to kind of try to get them onto your side by doing a can-can dance. And <laughs> Bruce Campbell was like, Sam, <laughs> I, I don't know about this. He's like, I just hurt my leg jumping off the you car. Seriously, so. <laughs> Can we not? None, none of that. Yeah. They also had a scene. They said whenever the deadites first <laughs> are about to breach, he said, okay, Sam's like, all right, so I want you to go out and I want you to bring all the children of the village with you. But then when you see how many deadites there are, I want you to run back into the castle, close the gates and leave the children oh out there. <laughs> Bruce Campbell is like, I don't think that'll work. <laughs> He's like, I don't know, man. <laughs> what are you trying? <laughs> a lot what of are ideas, you trying to yeah. <laughs> but none that make Ash look really yeah. good. <laughs> but as you see, none of them end up in the yeah. film. Good. <laughs> but Ash looks over to see that Arthur has a couple of arrows in him as he continues to defend the Necronomicon from the invading forces. Just then, Henry the Red and his men join the party, riding over a hill with Henry chanting, blows, blood, and death. They got the raven. Yeah. Yes, apparently. They said that there was a deleted scene of Ash actually going to talk to them. And no. I mean, <laughs> they said Universal cut it out. That <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah. Probably would have served the film. Yeah. <laughs> but okay. I was like, oh, they're here now. That's all. <laughs> And you see the Henry, like they smash through a bunch of skeletons. Yeah. There's a shot of Henry, like kind of in slow motion, just bashing through a skeleton. Yeah. They wanted to film that, but then they forgot. And so they filmed it later. And you, if you look really close, you can tell that Henry's not on a horse. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> at all. He said they filmed that on the side of a road. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> I can't tell. But yeah. here, yeah. Oh, There's just so much going on. Yes. Yeah. You just, you got to do what you got to do. <laughs> yeah. The quick cuts. It's like, sure. Yeah. He's on horse, right? What? Yeah. <laughs> keep going. Keep going. But they make their way to the castle as well. Unfortunately, Arthur gets himself fucked up by evil Ash who climbs the wall, making his way to the book. Ash tries to climb up after him, but evil Ash throws the ladder down, telling him that the book is his. Ash then cuts a weighted rope, holding on and sending himself up to the top of the castle with evil ash. There, there's a little arc with like a half skeleton on the ground yeah. <laughs> where he's like, I'm going to cut your gizzard yeah. or whatever. <laughs> and then Ash goes up and he goes, Hey, where'd he go? It's yeah. like, I love it. I love it so much. It's just, it's great. It's just great. But Ash tells evil ash to come to Papa, but evil ash just sends more of his men. One thing you need to know about Ash is he's always going to make time for a one-liner. Absolutely. Oh, yeah. uh, no matter what's going on, <laughs> he's like, no, this needs to come to Papa. Like, yeah. it's, it's just not going to be the same if not. But like, you know, Arthur's full of arrows, right? <laughs> <laughs> Arthur's dying. Yeah, Arthur, he's bleeding out as we speak. <laughs> but Ash soundly and roundly defeats the reinforcements with some good fight choreography. Yeah. And in this sequence, it is one shot of him defeating all of them. That's what I was going to say. I know... I know leading into the next scene, everything, the whole ballet of all this yeah. is fucking beautiful. Yeah. Like, really, I was sitting, like you said, you sat there and you're like, man, I'm just watching the movie. Uh huh. But I was sitting there watching it and then I rewinded it and watched it again and I was like, man, this is fucking great. I was like, I know it's whatever it is, but yeah. this is fucking great. Like, for real, the, him having, like you said, the choreography of it all. Mm -hmm. It just watching it is like, man, I bet this was fucking a treat to be there. Oh, yeah. While they were filming it, doing this shit. I couldn't even imagine. And you know, like, all the training that they had to do. Yeah. Like, uh, um, Bruce Campbell said in an interview that he doesn't necessarily enjoy <laughs> making the films. <laughs> <laughs> I bet. But he loves to watch them. I wonder why. <laughs> yeah. They're getting his ass beat. Sam the whole is just whipping him constantly. <laughs> oh, man. But um, no, it's, it's fantastic. But 
Ash is promptly attacked by Sheila, who jumps on his back. She throws him against the wall, reminding him that he found her beautiful once. He just responds with, <laughs> honey, you got real ugly. Yeah. <laughs> died. It's not even clever. No. <laughs> He's like, things have changed. Yeah. <laughs> She's speaking his mind. Yeah. <laughs> but still, honey, to soften the blow. Yeah, well. <laughs> that I died. There's still some love there. <laughs> But Sheila leaps to attack him, but he spears her through the chest and throws her off the wall. Evil Ash is just about to reach for the Necronomicon, but Ash spears him through the back too. But Evil Ash just tears it out like it's nothing and begins to battle Ash. In their back and forth, Ash reaches the upper level, battling against all odds, frequently outnumbered, but comes out on top. Now wielding two swords after snatching one from a fallen enemy, Ash battles Evil Ash up the stairs. So... (laughs) Sam Raimi wanted to do from the bottom of the stairs to the top of the stairs Mm -hmm. in one take. God damn. (laughs) And so they tried it for, I think, a full day of filming. God (laughs) damn. And they couldn't get it. And so Sam Raimi gets on the horn and he's like, all right, I guess we're going to have to chop this up. And Bruce Campbell, even he said in interviews, he said on the commentary, he said, I feel like I failed Sam Raimi on this. And I'm like, man, you did your best. Literally. Didn't he get, I know it was at some point during this last epic battle, he got sent to the hospital. It was this. Yeah. (laughs) Come on, man. Yeah. It was, I guess, whenever he throws that shoulder, that shoulder, that soldier off, Uh I guess a piece of his armor cut his chin. Oh. And so they took him to the emergency room. But the thing was, is that he had all the makeup from the other cuts. Yeah. And so (laughs) he made me laugh on commentary because when he got there, the doctor's like, which one? You know? (laughs) And so as he's sewing them up, he goes, and the doctor had to get in his snide remark at the end. As he was sewing me up, he goes, I could tell these other ones are fake. He's like, no, you couldn't, motherfucker. Yeah, Yeah, you asked. Yeah, you asked. Yeah. But this is what I was saying. Like when him, he's fighting evil Ash. Yeah. And like, I'm like, this must have taken forever. Yes. It's unbelievable. And you have to think about it because he had to do it twice. Yeah. Because you have to have one where he's Ash. Yeah. Fighting with the stunt double playing evil Ash. And then there are shots that it's clearly Bruce Campbell as evil Ash. Yeah. So you got to go in and do it. It's unbelievable. Amazing. But at the top, Ash stabs Evil Ash in the chest, flips over him, and stabs him in the back. Somehow, Evil Ash continues on, but Ash flips out of the way of his attack, snagging a torch from the wall and lighting Evil Ash on fire. He grabs onto a rope, swinging from it with a tally-ho, and kicking Evil Ash off the wall and into the courtyard. After a mere moment, Evil Ash climbs back up, fully skeletal, and now, for some reason, voiced by Sam Raimi. <laughs> <laughs> Why not? I don't know. <laughs> Why not? <laughs> but, but he continues the fight. I laugh because Evil Ash is like, I'm going to slice your gizzard open. I'm like, why are you telling yeah. me? <laughs> Did you have a meeting before about the gizzards? Everybody knows about the gizzards. <laughs> they had a plan. But this, there is a section of the fight where Ash is fighting with the IntroVision screen. Yeah. And it's like unbelievable because Bruce Campbell had said that, I guess, whenever you do something like this, you have to count it correctly. Right. Because every frame matters so it matches up. Yeah. 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 You see Arthur kick the head off a skeleton earlier. There was no skeleton there. That's amazing. Oh, wow. And it, yeah. it looked yeah. seamless. It looked seamless. But again, they're timing him. So they're like, okay, 34, 35, 36, kick his head. 37, 38. Like, it's unbelievable. Jeez. I can't even imagine yeah. coordinating no. this. But Evil Ash knocks the torch out of Ash's hands, and it lands next to a bag of gunpowder on a catapult. After socking Evil Ash in the face and getting some kind of slot machine reaction. <laughs> That's fantastic. <laughs> and he's the, Ash is, like, following it with his head. Like, it's a cartoon. <laughs> it is a cartoon. But Evil Ash knocks Ash from the castle walls, and he lands next to the torch. He watches as the flame travels up the fuse, and Evil Ash leaps down, landing on the catapult, Necronomicon in hand. Evil Ash tells Ash that he now possesses the book, and he'll now have his vengeance. Ash tells him to buckle up, because he's going for a ride. Evil Ash, for some reason, is confused by this. (laughs) He does not understand. He's like, what's a buckle? (laughs) That's what tripped him up. He's like, I don't. Yeah, I was like, well... (laughs) But Ash chops his hand off and catches the Necronomicon before cutting the rope and sending Evil Ash into the sky with the gunpowder, exploding in a blaze under the light of the moon. With their leader dead, the Deadites retreat and Ash's men cheer in victory. 
I'm like, well, but will they come back? <laughs> yeah, they're still <laughs> they're out there. Still here. <laughs> <laughs> but the camera finds Sheila on the ground and we watch as she returns to normal. She reaches her feet and rushes to embrace Ash, but everything isn't totally pizza, unfortunately, as Arthur's men and Henry's men slip back into their old ways. Ash, now holding hands with Sheila, stands between them as they draw their weapons. Arthur and Henry then look at each other from across the battlefield, and they start to charge towards each other. But instead of fighting, they hug. Aw. All yeah. is forgiven. <laughs> yeah. Well, they've seen the real monster. That's true. Yeah. <laughs> yes. They had to unite, and now they're friends. Right. Yeah. But all the men cheer, and Ash shakes both of their hands, admitted, <laughs> admitting that they had him going. Yeah. <laughs> yeah I thought you guys were going to fuck yeah. each other up. It made me laugh, because even Sheila's like, yay, but I'm like, didn't he kill your brother? Yeah. <laughs> Wasn't That's, that the beef yeah. at the beginning? We don't, we don't talk about that. Yeah. <laughs> According to Medieval Times, the documentary, they said that Richard Grove and Marcus Gilbert are still great friends to this day. Aw, <laughs> I love that. All right. And I was like, it all started here, oh, Yeah. It's just fantastic. But they all celebrate their victory as Arthur and Henry proclaim themselves to be brothers and that a new kingdom shall be born. Later on, Ash stands with the wise man next to a cauldron. The wise man fills a flask with liquid, telling Ash that once he drinks it and recites the words, Klaatu, Verada, Nikto, he'll wake up in his own time. He reminds Ash to recite the words exactly as he takes the potion in his hand. He's like, dude, we know. Yeah. Do not. <laughs> no coughing. No. no. Yeah. <laughs> but we then see Ash walking with Sheila outside the walls of the castle. They kiss deeply. And without a word, Sheila watches as Ash rides away on his horse. So remember this moment, because this moment is where we have the split of the different endings. Right. Yeah. Another thing that was interesting I heard on commentary was that I guess, and this, this again to another episode we've done, episode 75, there was a big cat reserve near where they filmed this. Oh, shit. Owned by Tippi Hedren. Oh, my God. And so they had to stop a lot of takes because there were roars of lions. Just, <laughs> ran- <laughs> just randomly. And one of the takes was this kiss. And uh. so <laughs> they had to do it a few times because of the cats. They were just going, aw. Yeah, yeah they thought it was adorable. But we transition to the flashing lights of Esmart as we hear Ash explaining that he left Sheila there in the 1300s. He says he thought about staying, and they even offered him a chance to lead them and let him be king, but his place is here. So he swallowed the juice, said the words, and here he is. Esmart clerk, played by Ted <laughs> Raimi. <Yeah. laughs> I was like, again? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Why not? <laughs> He's like, wait, so you fought alongside three of my ancestors? <laughs> <laughs> but the clerk listens to him, but he does kind of look over the whole story. Clerk asks if he said the words right this time. And Ash once again admits that eh, maybe he didn't say every single little syllable. Yeah. But basically, basically he said them. He does not learn. No. Yeah. He does look a little worried, though. And he's like, basically. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, oh, fuck. But he returns to tag some items, but Girl in S-Mart, played by Angela Featherstone, interrupts his work. If you recall, she was Jerry's maid slash girlfriend on Seinfeld. She was yeah. also Linda from The Wedding Singer. Yeah, oh, no, that's I right. I was like, yeah. Ash, don't, because she's going to leave your yeah. ass. Like, don't even get involved. But she tells him that she thinks that his story is pretty cute. Ash slyly agrees, but suddenly... A foul wind rips through the aisles and the lights flash. The evil force brushes past Ash and the girl, turning a woman behind them into a deadite. Ash just pushes the girl away. <laughs> he shoved the, the shit eye out of her. fucking died. <laughs> it, it was a lot. <laughs> <laughs> but then he gets smacked in the face by the deadite and he flies into a display of boxes. The Deadite rips a cash register off the counter and is about to crush the girl with it, but Ash, thinking fast, smashes the glass of the weapons counter and grabs a rifle. Standing on the counter, he shoots the register out of the Deadite's hand and asks her very politely to leave the store. (laughs) (laughs) The Deadite asks who he is, and he tells her, the name's Ash, housewares. 
He tosses the rifle. The man's committed to the job. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> He's always about S smart. <laughs> but he tosses the rifle into the air and rides a cart down the aisle, catching it in his hands and quick shooting as the deadite floats in the air. There was absolutely no reason oh, to no. throw that gun. Not at to all. To catch well, it a couple feet down the <laughs> <I mean, laughs> <laughs> The girl said that uh, his story was cute. That He's is true. Gotta, hey, gotta I got to show, show out. out. Yeah. This is kind of like, what I did. Yeah. I did just push her ass down. So <laughs> <Yeah>. I'm really, <laughs> really going to need to earn that back. <laughs> <laughs> but he sends the deadite flipping and she lands across from him defiantly telling him that she'll swallow his soul he simply retorts come get some he's like yeah i've heard, yeah. I've heard that i've heard that before <laughs> she charges for him and in the frenzy the flips continue as she bounces off of a trampoline and ash makes short work of her mid-air ash tears off his work shirt revealing his medieval garb and chainmail hand his <laughs> why <Yeah. laughs> why not he's still yeah, no shit got some use out of that <laughs> the truth he's like i need to go clock in i'm just yeah. gonna put <laughs> he had he was down to like 30 minutes yeah. <laughs> but ash narrates that he could have stayed in the past could have even been king but in his own way he is king the girl he saved embraces him and he dips her delivering the iconic line hail to the king baby before planting a kiss on her lips we fade to black and the credits roll. So, what did you guys think of Army of Darkness? Before we get into that, though, if we want to address the alternate ending really quickly. Right. Yes. Because, I mean, it's not horrible or anything. So, what happens is the wise man tells Ash that he needs to swallow six yeah. drops of the potion and then he'll be sent back to his time yeah so he goes like into this cave thing i watched it on youtube mm -hmm. i did read that that was the actual bat cave from the batman oh tv series oh my <laughs> god that's incredible <laughs> but he goes into a cave and he's using a dropper to drip it into his mouth so he does one two three four five and then some rocks fall so he stares at the rocks and then he's like five six oh. it's like yeah yeah <laughs> it's just it's, yeah. it's so frustrating <laughs> So he goes to sleep and when he wakes up, he's like barricaded in the cave and he has to push his way out through the rocks. And he's like, I slept too long. <laughs> he's got long hair, a long beard and the extra drop. He overslept like he overshot. Mm -hmm. And now he's in a post apocalyptic yeah. world where there's like no humans. Presumably. I, I saw the big Ben. Is all yeah, right. yeah. yeah. So uh, it's very bleak and yeah, sad. And I feel, it, and again, I usually go for the darker ending. We talked about this in The Descent, you know, mm -hmm. um, and a couple other movies too, I think. But there's just something about the slapstick and the ridiculousness of what <laughs> Army of Darkness is that you needed him still whooping ass at Esmar. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Still getting the girl, still spewing his one liners. Like, I feel like that is so much truer to yeah. what this film is than him being like, there was time now. <laughs> <laughs> it's not fair. Yeah. <laughs> I did read they had said that because that was the original ending and they were going to go with it because what their plan was, was Evil Dead 4 right. was going to take place in an apocalyptic wasteland. You can yeah, tell that this can, is yeah. set up yeah, for another one. They said that he was going to raise an army to fight. I can't remember if the army was this or the Deadites was, were this, but it was robots. Oh, so, right. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kind of glad they changed it because we, we would not have had Ash versus Evil Dead. See, that's my thing. I feel like Ash... For even that, this being the the weakest of the three, uh -huh. this is where really where Ash Williams was born, where he really like becomes his character, he shines, yeah, yeah, where he turns into Ash because you the get action hero, yeah. yeah. You get some taste of it in Evil Dead too, yeah. But this is the yeah, this is full on, yeah, yeah. yeah. But I guess uh, what did you guys think? Yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'll be quick because I mean I love the movie. <laughs> we yeah. all know. you know what I mean. I love this movie. I, I like I said a lot of the little things it comes down to like uh really everything like th the dialogue that each skeleton gives or like oh says the little things <laughs> yeah it's just shit you if you're not listening or you're not paying attention you're gonna miss it but if you're listening they all say 
funny shit. They do. Every line is fucking like when he hits him in the back with the spear, uh, Evil Ash, he's like, I'm going to ruin your good looks. Yeah. For what? <laughs> yeah. Just to talk shit. And, and, and you're Bruce Campbell talking to Bruce Campbell. Yeah. <laughs> and then uh, when, when he blows up and then the skeletons are leaving one of them, he's like, let's get the hell out of here. Yeah. <laughs> Why? <laughs> for who? Why, Why are do you, you have German? An for? Yeah. He was for German. Who? <laughs> That's for us. That yes. was just for us. <laughs> Absolutely. That's fucking great. I used to say that all the time as a teenager. Uh-huh. And I, like me and my, that was it. When something was bad, me and my brother or whatever, it's just, let's get the hell out of here. <laughs> no, let's go. Yeah. It's like you thinking the same thing I am. <laughs> let's go, bro. Like this shit is getting too crazy. Oh We've got to go. But th- that's what was like this. Everything, this movie was like... I do love the first two. Right. And I will. Yeah, this isn't as strong as those. But I feel like in in a different way, this is setting itself apart from them. And it is. You know what I mean? Like, and this, this is, this is fucking great. Like a lot of it. I'm, yeah, I'm just laughing. I'm never scared. Uh But it does keep it. Like you said, it still has the DNA from the first two movies. But it, it's like, you know what? This is what we want to do, and this is what we're gonna fucking do, <laughs> like it or not. And they do it, uh, yeah. Oh no, and I love it. And <laughs> I, I would like to take this time to personally thank Sam and Bruce mm-hmm. and uh, uh, the whole everybody, the cast, the yes. crew. Every- thank you. This is fucking fantastic. Yeah. No. Uh, this was a blast. Yeah. And I already had so much fun watching it. Like I said earlier, there's a point in the back half where I'm ju- I'm not even taking notes. I'm just watching it. Uh huh. Um, I had even more fun and I have even a deeper appreciation for it after yeah. having talked oh, about no, it yeah. yes. because God damn, man, what a, what a fucking <laughs> ride. Uh, for me, a lot of the, again, I go back to my fair lady. That was a lot for me. <laughs> oh, yes. Um, but like you said, T, it's kind of hypocritical because when the, the skeletons are poking him in the eye and stuff, I'm like, oh, that's, that's cute. <laughs> Um, the work that they did is just, I mean, yeah, incredible. The things that they were able to pull off, the commitment of the cast. Oh, my God. Especially Bruce Campbell, because the man yeah. is a goddamn trooper. He like, is. And just shines. He really, really shines in this. And mm-hmm. like you said, the transition really started in two. Yeah. But here it's just like, oh, no, this is what yeah. this is. This yes. is who Ash is. We're just... Fuck it. You know what I mean? Like, that's what this feels like. We're just here to have fun. And I did have fun. Yes. It's it's very, very fun. Oh, yeah. As I said, sometimes maybe a little too fun. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I got to say, even though it's not my favorite in the series, it's a fucking blast. Yeah. yeah. And it, I mean, you know, do you really honestly want to get three of the same exact film? No. Right. You yeah. know what I mean? This is like, and, and I understand that, like, sometimes... Well, most of the time, sequels get worse. Yes. Yeah. I wouldn't even necessarily say that this is worse mm-hmm. because it's not. Yeah, it's probably not as strong as the other two as far as horror is concerned. Yeah. But like I said before, this is kind of by itself. Yes. And this shit is great. And we, we talked about a long time ago, several months ago, on an episode of Talk Mortem over on Patreon. Yeah. When we were asked about possibly a franchise that has not had a lull. Yeah. Yeah. And even with the remake, which I think is great. Oh, no. Yeah. yeah. The Evil Dead franchise Mm -hmm. is brilliant. It doesn't disappoint. It does not disappoint. I'm very excited for Evil Dead Rise. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I cannot wait. It's going to be in theaters, I believe. So we got to go see it. Yeah. For sure. Take a pod mortem field trip. Damn right. But um, like I said, even though this isn't my favorite in the series, there's so much greatness here. There Mm -hmm. is. All the work that was put into it. Uh, and the boldness to be just so different from the first yeah. two. Yeah. Because holy shit. Well, learning about all that, that it's the, and, and I think that too is something that, like, when you bring the, the trivia and all that mm-hmm. behind the stuff, um, like for this, it feels like every time we cover uh, we cover a Evil Dead movie or something, and then Sam Raimi and them involved, <laughs> like, you see the family that's in yes. it. Yes. You see everybody's, all, all hands are on deck everybody's like shit sam needs something let's go Got it. Yeah. you know what i mean it's almost like they're the mafia and he's their <laughs> <Right>? boss <laughs> it's like <laughs> but you know yeah. what i mean everybody's willing to fucking let's go what do yeah. you mean what and that's the funniest shit your best friend oh no fuck him up yeah yeah, yeah no, oh, no yeah beat his ass 
They even said in the graveyard with the skeletons, he's like, no, go hard in him. Yeah. <laughs> like, and those are pointy bones. Yeah. Dude. yeah. And that's that. That's funny because you can you can feel that relationship. Yes. yes. It's like, oh, man, I bet he was back there laughing his ass off mm-hmm. watching somebody slap you. Or like you said, <laughs> he's throwing fucking potatoes at him. Yes. It's like, hey, I can see you, Sam. It's what like, the fuck? Come on, dude. Yeah, you're not even wearing a costume. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they had said... Um, to, to your point about the commitment of everyone yeah. they said i guess whenever there was that weird lawsuit situation and they had to do the reshoots yeah they put in rob tappert sam raimi bruce campbell probably ivan raimi a lot of the money that they were going to make on this film yeah to do the reshoots themselves i yeah. believe it because you feel that spirit in yeah. all three of these yes mm-hmm. that it's like we're not we're gonna put our money where our mouth is yeah. and we're gonna give you know everything we can to make this what we want it to yeah. be yeah and they they did. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but I guess that can take us into ratings. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, for me, on the positive side, the biggest positive of this film is Bruce Campbell. For yeah. sure. <laughs> like, he is probably the most committed actor I've ever seen. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the effects work is fantastic. The way that they blend all these different varieties. Yeah. yeah. The intravision stuff, the stop motion, the puppetry the makeup yeah costumes it's just really really good and the acting of people outside of bruce campbell they're serious yeah yeah they're, they they're doing this. it yeah. yeah and it works and it shouldn't work because it's such a weird concept yeah, yeah. <laughs> but it's great um i think that even with the meddling of universal sam raimi's vision mm-hmm. of what this film should be i think he he executed it yeah, yeah. And, of course, the skeletons I love. <laughs> <laughs> they get their own shout out. Yes, yeah. they do. They deserve it. They earned it. Um, the only the only really negative I can think of is I, I did want more horror. Okay. Yeah. yeah. And, I mean, it, and it would have been interesting to see Army of Darkness with the level of, like, blood and guts as the other two. Yeah. Oh, yeah. But at the same time, it's like, well, what would that have been? Yeah. It would have yeah. changed the you tone. Know, yeah. Could it have yeah. taken away from it and then would it made Army of Darkness less of its own thing? Right, right, right. So I don't know. Maybe that complaint can maybe I'll throw that out. <laughs> <laughs> but I will say some some of the slapstick was a little over the top. <laughs> <laughs> a little over the top for me. But I mean it it's a fucking blast, this film. Um it's a great cap to the trilogy. Mm-hmm. Um and then now it just makes me want to go watch the remake and yeah. Ash yeah. vs. Evil Dead. I think Ash vs. Evil Dead might be on Netflix still. I don't know. Not that we're, you know... Uh, I think it is. I checked the other day, uh, and it's still there, because that's something uh, else that I need to get back on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I was watching Sweet Home, but I think I'm going to go ahead and switch to <laughs> yeah. Ash vs. Evil You've been Evil inspired. Dead yeah. By, yeah. Right. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I'm going to definitely... Because I never finished that. Yeah. yeah. I'm going to have to get in on that. But uh, all that to say, um, this movie's fantastic. And for me, this I'm I'm a little torn. Because I did have, I just, I'm in a very good mood because we had a lot of fun. (laughs) (laughs) But I gave the first Evil Dead films, Evil Dead and Evil Dead 2, I gave them a Mm 9.5. I think I would honestly, at this point in my life, I would bump both of those up to a 10. Right. Yeah. Um, So for me, out of 10 fake shimps, I am going to give Army of Darkness 8.5. Hey. Fake shim, all right. out of 10 yeah. I, I love this movie and everything that went into it I think I just take off a little bit just for <laughs> the bit that goes a little too far <laughs> 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 but it's a great movie everyone should watch it yeah um, thank you for deciding this as your birthday movie no no yes. thank you shit <laughs> yeah. I had a lot of fun revisiting it um, happy birthday JP thank you happy birthday thank and you. I will now open the door open the floor yeah. open the gates of the castle <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> to you um, like I said before, you know what I mean? There, I, I don't, I don't need to really take a lot of, a lot of time. Uh, <laughs> yeah. This, the, like I said, this is, this is a movie and I know nostalgia plays a big part, but it's also, like I said, watching it as an adult, you can see a lot of the work and love that went into this mm-hmm. and it does show. And then learning everything that we did or that they did, you know what I mean? As we were covering it like that, for me, that makes it even better more that makes it mean even more to me because then right figuring out it's like oh all everybody was willing to do this yeah and yeah that's funny his brother playing three different parts <laughs> but you know what 
shit man if one of my siblings was like look i need help fuck i'll play everybody yeah. i don't give a fuck absolutely i'm eddie murphy in this motherfucker <laughs> you know what i mean give me a different costume whatever that's fine mm-hmm. that but even that if you're willing to do you know what i mean everybody uh, you know your parents get in here come on play sure. next right? yeah that's like you guys really wanted to fucking make this movie what you wanted to make it and mm-hmm. y'all did that um and i love it and i'll continue to love it and I'm sure this is uh, not for everybody because it is a little more comedy yeah. uh, than anything. <laughs> but uh, for me, uh, out of 10 fake shemps, I'm going to give Army of Darkness a 10. <laughs> I mean, I <laughs> can't. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I cannot. I so can't surprised. go any. Can I go higher? Is there a way to possibly <laughs> go higher? It's just, a, it is a lot of slapstick, but that is something that I do enjoy a lot of. Mm-hmm. And I feel like, the transition from just horror comedy to comedy horror you know what i mean (laughs) it it still works and it still fits in the universe yeah and like i said i feel like yeah we were introduced to ash you know what i mean to ashley and here we're introduced to ash right and it's like okay that's a really there we go this is the motherfucker i want to see right here (laughs) yeah yeah, no, I think you guys said it all already. This is a blast. The behind the scenes of how they made it work is incredible. Yeah. Um. Again, like y'all had said, the guts to go from the first Evil Dead yeah. to this. Yeah. <laughs> like only within the trilogy. It's kind of mind blowing. Um, <laughs> yeah. Because I mean, potentially you're alienating people who came to be scared. Because yeah. Because the first one is scary. It oh, is. oh, yeah. Um, the first I mean, one is. Yeah. But just the fact that this is so still so loved and, you know, it's just kind of shocking. It's mm-hmm. amazing. And I did have a lot more fun even talking about this. Like, <laughs> like you were like, I'm in a really good mood. It's like, yeah, yeah. So this was a fucking blast. Um, but all that being said, I uh, had said a couple parts went, went, a, little, yeah. went a little far. <laughs> um, so that kind of brought it down a little bit. I will say that talking sitting here talking brought it up from when I came to sit down okay. at the table. Yeah, me too. But um, on a scale from one to 10 fake shimps, I gave army of darkness eight out of 10. Oh, um, yeah. I came with the 7.5 just because I'm like, it's one of those movies where if somebody's like, that's stupid, you're like, well, yeah, yeah. but yeah. I like it. You know <laughs> what I mean? It went up just learning a lot of the behind the scenes stuff. Um, learning that Sam Raimi really just used these movies as an excuse to beat up his friend. (laughs) (laughs) It's, um, this is just a blast and it's not, don't look too deep. Don't expect it to be something that it's not. It's just fun. And I think that's, that's really just the bottom line. Yeah. Yeah. This movie is fun as fuck. And if, if you go into army of darkness expecting something more than that, yeah, yeah, you're going to be disappointed. It it doesn't need to be anything other than what it is. Yeah. No. And it's a blast. And like, once again, happy birthday, JP. Yes. Happy birthday. Ray. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Well, it's all from us at pod mortem. What would you rate army of darkness and what should we watch next? Let us know on Twitter at the pod mortem. Don't forget to follow us on Instagram and like us on Facebook. Be sure to follow each of us on Twitter at TravisMWH, at Blood and Smoke, and at RealStreeter84. Please consider pledging to our Patreon, and stay tuned until after the music for a special thank you to our Windigo Gitter patrons. And remember, while books have the power to take you places with ease, getting back might prove a little more difficult. Until next time. Thank you for staying tuned. We want to give a very special thank you to all of our Windigo Gitter patrons. Hey, Ooh, thank woo. you. I don't yeah. have anything Renaissance yeah. to say. <laughs> here ye, here. There I don't you know. go. Hail. <laughs> <laughs> Remember when we went to Medieval Times and the guy rode off and was just going, Medieval Times, times, times. times. <laughs> just echoed. It's like, what the fuck? <laughs> they didn't have echoes in the 1300s. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but a special thank you to... Chris Ontiveros, Kristen Lofton, Megan Martinez, Kimberly Bass, Sophie Hodson, Anthony Jerome M., Jordan Nash, Kent Morton, Guy54, Lala Thomas, Travis and Nisa Hunter, Miguel Myers ATX, Jennifer Perez, Pierre Lombard, Allison O'Neill, Carissa, TJ and Angie Bronson, Gabrielle Trevino, Spooky Mom, Andy Teague, Applin Ontiveros, Karima Rhodes, Antonio Huerta, 
Kimberly Kleindienst, Will Brown, Sidney Smith, Osvaldo Soto, Jonathan Booth, Bobby Holmes, Donna Eason, J.D. Rizak, Molly Gerhardt, Armand Spasto, Aaron Aguirre, Eggie, William Berry, Brittany Ramatar, Charity Oxner, Amanda Six, Mandy Rainwater, Eden, Jordan Roberts, Dylan, Melissa Sierra, Holly Bryan, Jordan Blevins, Michelle Moore, Liz Heath, Spencer Montalvo, Pancake the Panda, John Ramos, Michael Newding, Alexis Roberts, Dan Laveau, Itzy M, Gary Horton, Amanda Aliff, Leisha Olivier, Kate Lamp, Carlos and Sydney, Jessica Hunter, Helena Rudder, Alan Johnston, Mariah, Livy Fun, Mandy M, Scott Troutman, Towton Watson, Mozzie Bear, Brittany G, Dave Burke, Adrian Stakes, Craig Kowalski, Nick Spill, Emma Hagel Kissinger, Ashley Weidman, Angelica Cornelius Witt, Valerie G, JSL, Emiliana, Brian Glass, CB, Maya Noches, Taylor Santana, Will Lewison, Chris Manley, Angelique, and Smelly Poo Poo Head. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> thank you all yes. so much yeah. <laughs> thank you so much it's a great one to end on uh, <laughs> oh yeah <laughs> <laughs> we, we truly appreciate all of you and we want to thank you all because you've decided to join us yeah. Yeah. do they even nope, say that they don't say that one. <laughs> <laughs> well, you but know. I said it on the other two <laughs> <so>. <laughs> it'll be fine <laughs> all just good. get past it until next time